it promises to be very engaging in a very warm time. We're going to certainly have the best of time. This is, like I said, an epoch making event, and we're launching, going into a territory that remains uncharted, but with this step, we're going to make it charted and we're going to have it an legacy making event for people to come and see that this is possible. Welcome once again and um, just sit back in a short while we could pick up properly. Um, my name is Tommy Vincent and together we're going to make this event the best of its ever. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful time. So today we are going to celebrate another but personally, I expected him to have done much more than this. Many more books by now, Professor of Law, in there, regardless of whether he was in the corporate world or not. But today, at least he has done well, and we're celebrating that with so much so. So I want to, want to, going to start the um, webinar, and I'm going to call on the chairman of this occasion, the chairman of the webinar, and the speakers, and all of them to come and take their place. Um, the webinar we're going to start is called, the title of the webinar is Real Estate Innovative Financing Solutions Post-COVID-19. Real Estate Innovative Financing Solutions Post-COVID-19. And um, first, to, for me, to, uh, I have to call the chairman, who are going to be the main anchor of that webinar, and I'm talking about no other person than uh, Prince Yemi Adifulu, MFR. Prince Yemi is celebrating. Astute, astute, professional. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome. Really welcome, sir. And the speakers for that um, webinar is one of them. One of them, um, some of them are going to be virtual on, online, and some of them are here. But let me start with Ifoma Ezio Kafo, the Principal Investment Officer, IFC, International Financial Congression, Washington, D.C. I'm sure she's going to join us virtually. She's going to join us yeah. virtually. I also want to call on, uh, please let me give her a round of applause. Let's end the celebration. End the celebration. Oh, there she is. Ifoma, we salute, we celebrate you. We celebrate you. Wow, wow. And also, um, we're going to call on Amelia Bitti, the CEO of Liberty Two Degrees in South Africa, wherever you are. I'm sure she's going to come. Wow, 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 wow. Bitti, nice to have you. Nice to have you. Of course, in Nigeria, here with us, Astut, Astut, um, and prolific administrator in, in this space. We're going to call on Paul Owanibe. Paul Owanibe, who is the CEO of the Landmark African Group, Lagos, Nigeria, doing great exploits. I think you have to come and take your seats. Yes, 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 yes. Please, a round of applause for Paul. Well done, Paul. Well done. And also to join us is Nii Adelaide, the head real estate finance, African region. Standard Bank, Standard Bank. Wow, he's joining us. He's joining us virtually as well, wherever he is. Is he here? Not yet, yeah. not yet. Yeah. Let's move on to Jumoke Akiumi, the co-founder and the CEO of Aditya Capital, Lagos, who is going to be the moderator of this event. Jumoke is here, please help me, help me celebrate. Up me, up me, up me, up me. Wow. So I'm going to leave it to you now, George, to start. Uh, so we'll just have one person that is not yet online, and that is uh, me, Akilaya. I'm sure she is going to join us uh, very soon. So let's, let's kick it off. This is very important. We need to know what's happening post COVID 19, the real estate innovative financing solutions. How do we get the money? I like the way you put that. How do we find the money? Thank you very much, and um, good morning, everyone. It's indeed an honor to be here to moderate a panel of esteemed colleagues in the real estate space. Um, thank you for 
everyone who's present and everyone who's watching us online. The subject matter, innovative financing solutions post-COVID-19 is obviously relevant. Um, the pandemic has created so much um, structural and social changes in a number of industries and our industry, the real estate space is not excluded. Um, so while it is said that the full effects are not yet known, it is clear from everything that we have seen that the composition of the industry is going to change almost irreversibly. So it's uh, with great pleasure that this morning we'll focus our attention on the impacts that some of these shifts will have on financing real estate. I just opened um, uh, Kim's book and there's a phrase that he always uses. He always says, real estate is essentially a financing game. And that's what I found in the first line in the introduction. And that <laughs> and that is uh, the fact. So the panels will be addressing issues like what the key drivers of financing decisions are now and things, since things have changed. Um, what kind of capital stack should we expect to see in major real estate transactions? And also I'll be asking their opinion about whether we're entering into a bullish or conservative season. Now, the panelists have been introduced, so I wouldn't go into that anymore. I'll start with, um, with Amelia. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Amelia, so I want to ask um, you a question you. to try to set the tone. About uh, the you okay? So I have a about the rental market. Uh, what is happening in that space across retail, residential, um, industrial, and um, whatever else there is in the rental market? Thank you very much for hosting uh, this today. And uh, let me first start by saying congratulations to Hakim on the launch of uh, your book. Hakim has been a friend of ours in South Africa for many years. And um, I read in the Financial Times last week that COVID gave us the gift of time. And perhaps the coming about of this book uh, is also featured in that gift of time that um, that Kim had to bring this book uh, to the market. So congratulations again. So if we think about what happened in the last year, if we look at the space market, as you call it, um, occupancy remains key. It always was and it always will. And even during COVID times, not post-COVID, um, it is un very, very important that we continue to keep our properties occupied, whether it's in the retail space or whether it's in the um, residential or office space. And I think it's never been more key than it is now because um, the financiers of property look for their occupancy because that drives, uh, drives the rental. The cost of a vacancy is high. So if you have to make the trade-off between giving some assistance in, uh, in keeping a tenant in place versus um, replacing that tenant and letting the space stand for, uh, for a bit longer, the cost of that, keeping that vacancy or having a vacancy is much higher than helping the tenants that are in there to remain in play and remain trading um, and conducting their businesses and through that creating some uh, rental uh, income. I think retail property um, probably have changed the most uh, during the last year and had the biggest structural shift. Um, there's been significant changes that we will see going into the future in the use of retail property. We've always said that um, there's a lot of things that you can do in a retail property. You don't only have to sell things. There's no reason why you can't come and see your doctor in the, in the mall. There's no reason why you can't um, come and run your office from, from a retail space. So we think that the biggest structural shift will be from conduct, having experiences and providing experiences to cu customers to creating new micro communities where we see a sense of belongingness, people wanting to be in a place. And I think all our property environments um, provides that access and if we can get that right I think property will continue to be something that will provide a great investment case into the future. Um, I would um, now ask you uh, Paul 
you've been doing a number of developments, um, largely in Lagos, I think. And so you need to speak to us about what, is, what will happen and what is changing in the development market. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you very much. And we, we were talking off camera earlier about, about this. Um, but first, I'd like to congratulate Kim, my brother and um, dear friend and Arsenal fan. Uh, so um, you're doing some great things. And when, when you finally figure out how to finance real estate, I, I'll be your first client. In terms of what's, what's probably changing here, I suppose there are three key things that will create a sort of shift. Um, we we're speaking offline and we agree that real estate is a long-term game. Um, so that gives us the, the luxury of patience. Uh, we can sort of watch, wait, see, and then react. And we don't have to trade like other people and, and change our trade the next day. Um, but I think there are three key things that have happened. One is what Amelia mentioned. Um, I think there's more diversification in real estate now just because the boundaries between work and leisure are collapsing. Um, so how different companies react to that will, will determine how successful they will be. The second is just environmental responsibility. Um, it's a global phenomenon. We can no longer just ignore the environment and, and put the bricks and mortar together. How, again, we react to that in the long term will determine how successful we will be. I think the third thing is experience. Um, and I very much agree, and if, if you if you or we if we've had the pleasure of you visiting our our site you would see that um, we very much believe in producing experience-based real estate and we want to move away from that traditional model of buy the land build the bricks and mortar and then rent out the property um, i personally don't think that in nigeria today the commercials actually work land is too expensive it's too expensive to build and by the time you rent it's unaffordable so i think the new currency in real estate is footfall um, and just creating that experience and making sure people come to the site and using other ways to leverage um, income, I think it's important. So our currency at Landmark is footfall rather than rental income. That's brilliant to hear. But from the point of view of development, so you're developing experience, buildings that provide an experience rather than just the brick and mortar. Thank you. Um, I would ask... Um, Ifoma to contribute to this as well. Um, at the POI at the IFC, uh, what would you say would be the two most profound shifts and why? Um, um, hi, hello to everybody. And I just wanted to also use this opportunity to congratulate Hakim on the book he, had, he has written, as this timing is quite, is quite, is, is quite, um, critical for moving into new asset classes. Sorry, just a moment. Okay, this is a good time to, to start discussing moving into new asset classes. And our observation at IFC is previous, prior to now, we had focused a lot on investing in development funds and development um, developers creating new assets. And right now, the shift is that there are a lot of assets in the market now, and these, develop, these stabilized assets are looking for a secondary market, right, at this time to, to be able to sell the assets and recycle capital and in the process build new assets. So as an institution, what we see, and this is a bit more globally, is that the capital market um, innovation is very important. Some through REITs, of course, some have REITs to be permanent capital vehicles. So we see a great opportunity here in the capital market for investing in assets, because as you know, in countries like Nigeria, for example, the pension funds are looking for where to invest insurance companies. So this, um, this, this asset class that Hakim is, has prepared a book on to, up to help to educate us on is, is going to be a very important asset class in the future. So this is where we see um, the direction of real estate. And just one quick comment is that what we have seen is that the focus had been on like retail, family housing and office, grade A office buildings. And in the future, we see that there was like, there's likely to be growth in more warehousing, data centers, right? other assets, classes of accommodation, of student accommodation and so on and so forth. So we see growth in new assets there, 
and then in the secondary market for those that there has been significant development in the past. Thank you very much for, for this, um, Ifoma. Um, I, take, I take your point about the fact that the secondary market needs to be developed. I see that from the point of view of institutions and um, allowing the free flow of institutional funding, but I also see it from a retail perspective where people who otherwise are excluded from enjoying the benefits of investment in real estate can also participate. So let's move on quickly. Cash is king, or in your transactions, capital is king. Um, how will the risk models of uh, banks and other providers of, uh, financing, of financing, particularly debt financing, um, accommodate the, what we should call the altered realities? So from the perspective of pricing real estate instruments, and of course, I'm sending that question straight away to you, Ni. Um, thanks, Jumake. Hi, um, hope you can hear me well. Yes, we can. All right. Um, again, congrats to uh, Akim on his book. Um, I think it's timely. Um, I think other speakers have sort of spoken, have sort of spoken about the evolution of the markets, um, um, sort of moving from sort of single asset financing to starting to put together sort of portfolio structures. And I mean, from those portfolios evolved to permanent capital structure, permanent capital vehicles, which of which REITs and uh, um, private and public would, would sort of be uh, major participants. Um, so, 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 so Akim's book is timely in that, in that, uh, from that context. I mean, um, maybe answering your question directly, uh, Jim, okay. Um, so from, you know, from a lender's perspective, which is perhaps the perspective I'm sharing at the, at the moment, um, we still sort of remain focused on, on supporting the sector um, from a standard bank point of view. However, what, what, ha what, is, what is real as, um, as a strategy is that um, sponsors have to have flexibility in their capital stack. Um, you, you, might, you might start a project um, with a certain level of debt equity sort of um, ratio, but as the, the, the challenge with um, offering or with the financing models from, um, from the continental perspective is sometimes the volatility that exists in a number of the African jurisdictions. Uh, and Nigeria is a good example um, in that sense. Um, therefore, that flexibility requires flexibility both from the lender as well as from the, as well as from the sponsor. Um, it means that if, if an asset is stressed and requires deleveraging, that flexibility has to be there. Um, um, if, 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 if you can gear it up for that, that flexibility from the lender's perspective has to be there. What we're seeing is an evolution of moving from, you know, funding assets on a sort of standalone basis to trying to create portfolios around them to create inbuilt resilience that ensures that um, you, they, can, they can ride through the cycles. Um, and there will be cycles. Now there's the typical traditional real estate cycle that is sort of a, a demand supply interplay, but there's other cycles that come through in some of, some of African markets where it is interrupted by um, macroeconomic sort of um, um, shocks. Um, so for example, Nigeria, once there's, a, there's, a, there's an oil shock that tends to send um, certain sort of um, uh, uh, signals or certain sort of interruption into the real estate cycle and the ability to manage that on a consistent basis to ensure sustainability in um, commercial and economic sustainability, as well as environmental that um, Paul mentioned into those projects become very, very important. Uh, from a pricing model point of view, I mean, you would price based on sort of the risk rating of the countries. Um, currently things don't, um, the ratings have somewhat been downgraded across many of our African countries, but generally speaking, you don't see those pricing models change materially. What, you, what changes is how you dimension and how you slice the risk um, and how you, the level of um, participation and collaboration that has to play, that has to, an interplay that has to happen between the equity capital providers and the debt capital providers. And you know, as people have, as, as other panelists have alluded to, Amelia and um, Paul, it, it's a long-term game. So you can't afford to take a short-term view of, 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 of the decisions that you take. You have to, you have to build in that, that flexibility and that resilience. Thank you so much. Thank Nick. you. Yeah.
what I take it from you straight away is the flexibility story from both sides, both the finance yeah. and the project uh, promoter as well. Um, I also hear what you say about looking at investment from the portfolio point of view rather than you know individual standalone um, assets. Thank you. So moving on quite quickly, um, I want to talk a little bit about the alternative types of lending that is starting to happen. We hear um, green lending, there's the Islamic uh, finance. Um, it's, are these types of non-conventional, at least for now, lending going to become more um, important in our sector. And um, Amelia, would you like to speak to that? Thanks. I think um, ESG um, and sustainability is certainly something that, um, as Paul and Nias mentioned, um, very important for the lending market. Um, but before you can do some green lending, you know, you need to make sure you have all the different sustainability initiatives in place. Um, in the property sector, I think in the built environment specifically, there's a lot of opportunity to build green buildings um, that can give you a, a lot of efficiencies. We here in South Africa just had our entire retail portfolio um, uh, that is uh, in building um, Green Star rated, and that gives us the opportunity to then um, be able to access finding that specifically Standard Bank has got a green um, uh, debt structure that they can offer. But more importantly for me is that what that does to your property is it, it reduces the risk. So it, um, it reduces commercial risk because you know that the property uh, will be um, performing for better for a longer time. Um, you uh, protect against asset obsolescence and um, you also do what is right in terms of the environmental responsibilities as well as um, the social creating the social fiber and governance that should be in in our sector so I think we'll certainly see more from a green lending um, and on the Islamic side I mean uh, we haven't seen much of that but I think the fundamental way is that the risk is very low, so they fund a lot. Um, uh, they look for something where there's less risk involved, uh, therefore lower debt instruments and looking for other types of, uh, of capital. And I think there's an abundance of that capital out there if one can comply with the Sharia requirements and um, uh, get that risk down to an acceptable level. Great, thank you so much. Um... If I'm, I'm going to ask you the same question, actually. So sitting in IFC, um, what do you see in terms of this um, rather not so conventional funding opportunities? Well, in, in IFC, um, what you have called not so conventional is what we have been doing in the ordinary course of business, right? You know, we work across various regions, including regions where Islamic finance is a necessity rather than just an option. So in terms of Africa, for example, we can also take the structures we've used there and try and apply within Africa. So it's something we'll continue to do. Then in terms of green financing, um, although we sometimes do not brand it as green or often do not brand it as green, but a lot of our real estate investments are in green buildings. And we have internally, we track this on our various scorecards. And we also have our IFC Edge, which you may have heard about, which is a green building standard, which we encourage most of our clients engaged in different types of real estate to, 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 to achieve the standards of. So this is something we are doing and will continue to do going forward. Thank you so much for that. Um, I read recently a document um, a study that was done by CAF, and I'm not talking about the football body. I'm talking, <laughs> I'm talking about uh, the Center for Affordable Housing Finance. So this report was on REITs. It's a few years old, but it still was making a case for the development of residential REITs as a means to create the financing structure to increase investment in affordable housing. And I want to tie that to a recent 
um, a, a, a recent report that was done on the Chinese government who, in a bid to uh, draw back from its funding the COVID situation, has created a huge red vehicle. And that vehicle is seeking to um, offer great returns for people with what they call low risk capital, so people's savings. Now, that seemed to me to be quite an interesting concept. How do we take the lessons from whether it's the Chinese or successful um, models of residential rates uh, and apply it to Africa and specifically to Nigeria? And I'd like each of you to give a really short response, um, starting with you. Whilst the REITs market here is, is still developing um, yes. and it's developed quite fully in other parts of the world, and there are many reasons, and, and I can point to some of that in the book. I suppose it's a good platform, REITs is a good platform anyway, to, to fund, or maybe not to fund, for investors to invest in, in property. Um, it has many reasons. The first reason, I suppose, is just strong um, dividend. The third, the second reason is is capital appreciation of the property. Um, the third, I suppose, is more about it's it's a good it's a good way because it's modeled alongside sort of mutual funds. Um, it's it's a good way to receive sort of real steady steady income, but it allows the population to get more involved in property. I was reading somewhere that 145 million Americans through their 401ks have invested in, in REITs programs. And because of its low correlation, real estate's low correlation to other asset classes, it's a good diversifier. Um, so just on a general, I can't speak specifically about finance. I must admit, I'm not a real estate finance expert. But, but as a general principle, um, if we develop the REITs market um, in Africa, more specifically in Nigeria, um, you would see it as a catalyst to housing and growth. Thank you. Um, I'll have Ifoma respond as well, please. Okay, so in, in terms of the REIT market, I think the lessons we could learn is we need to be patient about the development of the REIT market. And this is a case in, for example, Mexico, which started the REIT market in around 2004. And for a few years, it was not quite successful, but they kept at it working on some of the key things that are important in REIT markets, for example, the government regulation, you know, and regulation is not just putting it in place, but also let it be clear and effective and efficient. Um, and also things like setting up a REIT organization association to, be, to build a lot of faith in the REIT market in this, the relevant country, as well as, um, as well as, um, providing a lot more education about REITs to not just institutional investors, but retail investors. So I think some of these key things we need to do and be patient about them. You can't do them in one day and not give up and continue to work with government to continue to build the regulation to support this asset class. And when you look at Mexico today, even though in 2004 and the few years following that, it was not really going very well Today, they are considered a, a very good example of a REIT market in Latin America. So it's very important. We can't build this market overnight. If it's not quite perfect next year, it doesn't mean oh, we have failed. We have to keep working at it. So I think that's my quick comment on what we can learn from other markets. Thank you, Informa. Um, me? Um, th thank you, Marcus. I, I, I think uh, for me, I'll approach it from the fundamentals of, of, um, of what REITs should do. REITs should distribute income from stabilized um, operating assets, um, um, income generating assets. Um, residential is perhaps the largest re, um, sub-segment of real estate. Um, um, in terms of its of its broad up in its broad relevance, I think some statistics say about eighty percent actually um, is is related to residential type um, uh, de demands or uses. Uh, certainly, the ability to mobilize capital um, to acquire will um, to acquire residen residential stock will you know will make sense. But I think the fundamentals to perhaps look at is first of all is there the stock. Of 
um, investment grade residential properties. Um, what do you need for that? Um, so you, you're looking at large, you know, large, large uh, residential complexes, uh, not standalone units, because the risk of that is significantly um, heightened. Um, so you're looking for some level of homogeneity in, in it. This, the simplest example like you can probably give is maybe 1004 where you have that, that complex. So you're gonna to have to be thinking about that in a scale of hundreds. Um, and then the rental income that, is, that comes from it is, is it, the yields are sort of um, acceptable to investors. If I recall correctly, resident, residential yield in, in Nigeria at the moment is probably you know, 5% or below, which is somewhat below the rate of inflation, which if, if my numbers are correct, is probably in the region of about 14, 15%. So that in itself kind of um, eliminates sort of the value proposition there immediately. But to, to if you're my sort of point, you keep working at it. So part of it is maybe bringing down construction costs to ensure that um, without necessarily increasing the rate, the rental, the rental charges, your yields go up. Um, and that then starts to make that asset class attractive to, to investors. Because ultimately, if you put a pool of assets together and the returns are not attractive, you won't find investors participating in that investment. Uh, and that's the, that's the link to, to drive to ensure that what you're creating, and I use that word all the time, sustainability, and I'm talking about economic sustainability, you can sort of um, short circuit the process and provide sort of um, um, subsidies, but that will not get you to a sustainable market. So the economics itself has to work. We have to build cheaper. We have to, um, you know, you have to be able to get people into into units um, and get them to, you know, pay rent the units. Um, if 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 they buy the units, then you, you then you create mortgage rates, which you can then sort of structure the the mortgage payments off. So it de it definitely has a wide application, but there are certain fundamentals ourselves that we have to resolve. I think my last check, if you take mortgages for example, I think in a country of um, over 200 million people um, with a with an estimated sort of 17 to 20 million housing deficit. I think we had maybe just under 200,000 um, mortgages in the whole country. So you know, from a scale point of view, you haven't even scratched the surface. Thank, thank you for your insight. And finally, Amelia. I think I'll just uh, uh, all the points are very valid, and I'll just add one point, and that is. That of education, I think it's unbelievably important to make sure that investors are educated as to what happens in, in a REIT, especially if you are taking money from people's household savings. And it's about managing the expectations. If they are expecting to receive um, something more than what the REIT can actually produce, it leads to uh, a whole lot of unintended consequences. And I think uh, our chief duty as leadership of, uh, of REITs is to continue that education to all our investors all the time so that we are able to um, meet their expectations in the best possible way. Thank you. So there's still a lot of education to do, um, but the opportunities none of you have said doesn't exist. Um, I also then want to ask you, we're getting close to the end. Um, what will be the impact of technology going forward in real estate? And th the reason for that is already we see what has happened in the past year and in this forum. So there's three of you out there, there's two of us here, and you're talking to a room full of people in Ikoi, Lagos, Nigeria. Um, what should we be doing as promoters um, of real estate investment um, with regards to technology? And quickly, one minute each. Um, and again, I'll start with you, Paul. The, the first thing that strikes me about the use of technology is speed. Um, so speed in production, speed in like, accessing information, um, speed in, in showing or selling um, to the clientele. Um, so technology will have a big impact going forward and the real estate industry is probably one of the last industries to sort of sit on this technology and leverage it to make it um, sort of snappier, faster, cheaper, you know, and more efficient. Um, so one hopes that as we see the years coming, especially with this um, pandemic, um, it's really a blocks one event. It's just changed the way we think and the way we operate 
and I believe that you're really going to be dragged out of the old times. But you know, the regulatory environment is a strong one here, and unless technology is infused in that in that environment, you're going to have some huge delays in producing real estate. I totally agree with that. Um, if I'm a, what would you recommend sitting from the vantage uh, point of the IFC? Well, in terms of technology for developing assets, I think my point is very similar to Paul's. That we have to take on new technology to build faster and more efficiently. And from what we have seen in countries like Nigeria, when it comes to building for like housing, people or buyers still want to see the traditional bricks, you know, um, and here a very hard wall. But in reality, the world is moving away from that, right? There's some lighter but stronger material that could be used to achieve the same or better. And I think we need to start, um, should I say educating? And maybe you start by educating the market on the fact that this, this is not lower quality just because it's faster or just because it's not, doesn't have that solid, very hard feel to it. And I think, um, I think without the education of the people who you want to invest, you can do all you want in technology and it might not work out. And that, that, that speaks to Amelia's point, although she was talking about education in the REIT market, but if people don't understand how good new technology is and that building fast does not mean poor quality, it cannot be successful on the house inside, for example. Okay. Thank you. And Amelia? Yeah, for me, this is such an exciting space and it just opens up so much opportunity for us, but um, Technology goes hand in hand with, with real estate. And I think our biggest opportunity is to let it live together and not see it as two things, not see technology there in real estate here, but to have a complete integrated approach where we bring technology to live together with our real estate. If you think about retail, it's not about online, it's not about offline, it's there's no line space where we find ourselves in where we can get it all together and you can get it on your cell phone or you can get it in the mall doesn't matter and it's that is such a huge opportunity and i think there's such a wonderful uh, new world that opens up for us as a result okay thank you me thanks um i think i'll take on the point from um, from Paul, that real estate tends to be one of the slowest adopters of technology to a certain point. Um, I think I'll live on that. I'll, I'll lay on that. Maybe the jurisdiction that we're in, um, what we've seen, we operating in 20 plus countries, is that the adoption of technology um, in terms of um, of leapfrogging um, the use of real estate will be um, possibly even slower because of some of infrastructural challenges, maybe data, data services, um, um, actually transportation infrastructure, um, you know, the, the, way, uh, the way our residential properties are configured. So you won't see perhaps an elimination. I mean, you will see an adoption of, I mean, and if we use sub-segment, you, you may see uh, more adoption of sort of remote working, but you will not see an elimination of, of offices. You may see an adoption of um, online retail, uh, but you would not eliminate the brick and mortar, mortar retail. Um, to Amelia's point, you will probably see more of an aggregation of it. Um, um, same, same with the with with the home environment. The area where you would where you might see the adoption faster is property is property services maybe, um, and, and you know sort of that one you, you've talked about is technology in terms of faster building um, and new materials um, but then you you probably see the um, the technology application into property services even and even lending practices um, we see people setting up platforms where you can find frameworks to, to you know to, to 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 load your project on and your application process in terms of lending decisions become somewhat almost partly automated and faster. I mean, it's a little bit more diff difficult with re real estate in the sense that it's it's tactile. You've got to see it and get a sense of what it is. But there will be elements of that lending process that you can sort of automate. Um, in in terms of 
di digitization that we do um, from a business point of, from a lending point of view, it's actually being able to um, automate and and um, and create sort of data 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 sets or data data um, storage of all the things that we're doing so that it it enables your decision making to be faster. So maybe some of that um, of that application we'll see come through. Thank you. I mean, without doubt, it, it's clear that the real estate industry is being dragged out. Um, and this past year has been a major game changer for us. Um, so we're about to wrap up now. I'm just going to ask each one of you to give your last word. I'm curious to know how you feel about the, the sector um, in the next few years. Do you think we're going to come out of all of this stronger or do you see a really major challenge somewhere? So uh, I'll start with you, Amelia. I think there's a very good reason that Real Estate Investment Trust has the word real in there. Um, I see that it stands for the relationships that we need in this industry between all the different parties to work together. It's about education and we spoke about that and that's education in all sectors. It's about advocacy. Um, we have to play a big role with our regulators and our governments to, uh, to help us with that. And then it's about leadership. It's about people like Akim, it's like people like all of us that really take a leadership position in this, uh, in this industry. And I think we still see two difficult years and we are realistic about that. But I think certainly property has always shown that it will in the long term can't come out of this. So I always say, don't forget the real in real estate. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. We love your optimism. Me? Uh, I, 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 I share Amelia's sentiment. Um, I think one of the characteristics that you will find with most people that operate in this sector, and Paul alluded to it earlier, is that your mindset is long term, um, not 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 from not a trading um, sort of mindset. So, so I think, and I may just be um, deluding my myself uh, in in that sense, but. But, but I, I don't see um, an elimination of, of the segment of the sector. I think you it, it for me it goes back to fundamentals of the demand profile. Um, do we stop living in houses? Do we stop needing interface with retail? There are certain things that you can that is comfortable to buy online, and there are other things that um, that you just have to have. You just prefer by that the nature of human interaction. To, to, to interface with other humans. Um, you know, we talk about online, um, on, online, online shopping. Um, and I, I'll just, if you just, it, it, it just is a personal example. <laughs> I've, I've tried to buy a, a specific item and I, I, I've, I've, um, I've returned it about five times what he sent back to me. Um, it, it would have saved me time to just go to a store and just pick it up. Um, in fact, and, and, and he still has, they still haven't provided exactly what I want. Um, so, you know, those, those realities are, are things we'll face with. Will we, will we stop using um, uh, the office as an innovation center to, 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 to leverage on ideas development? I don't think so. In fact, in this COVID period, um, in, our, in, our, in sort of our portfolio, we've seen even the likes of Facebook, Google, Microsoft, all open offices um, and expand the office demand in this space. Where actually you actually when you read some material you're seeing some of the tech companies actually pulling back on remote working because it's creating material sort of um, fiscal tax sort of liabilities for them because the the real implementation of it and the and the hasn't been hasn't been bottomed out so do I think we'll go out or get out of this I think so I think the sector is a sector that that supplies real need and meets real demand. And therefore you will go through the bumps on the road, but ultimately, I mean, there will be certain fundamental structural um, changes we need to make, but the sector can, I, I can't see an elimination of that sector in terms of its, of its application and its, its use and its interface with, with um, human needs. Thank you so much. Uh, if I, I'll, I'll give you a little tip about buying online, offline. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ifoma, please. Thanks a lot. So, yeah, I think that 
after this pandemic and of course during the pandemic, the real estate market, the real estate opportunity, investment opportunities will continue to be there. It's a fairly resilient sector um, as, a, as a whole because a lot of the assets are necessary. But what I think may happen is that there may be a shift, shift in, in what proportion goes into what subsector. For example, the offices will not go away, but are, are the office, is the office space going to be as important as it used to be? You know, the jury is out on that, but we will still go to the office, but we need to go all the time, every day. Will there be some flexibility, which will ultimately reduce in result in reduced need for a certain amount of office space. And I also look at retail and I hear what um, M. Nee was saying about returning things something like five times and not getting the right thing. Though at the same time, we've picked up some online shopping habits that we didn't have before. So there might be a, a need to go to the store, but you will always need the retail shopping center. But that doesn't mean that the need for real estate disappears. The more e-commerce, the more you need the warehousing and logistics. So the market as a whole, I think will be resilient, but there'll be shifts within the subsectors that we might see in the coming, coming years based on what happened during the pandemic. Thank you, thank you so much. And finally, Paul. You know, it's you and I here, so. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Um, so I like to look at this from an industry perspective. Um, I think if this industry is not just going to survive but thrive, there are a number of things that have to happen. There are three players in this industry, and the fourth player has gate crashed. The three key players are the client, who basically get what they want, that's the occupier, the financiers, who give what they have, and the developers, who just they, they take what they're given, right? The fourth player that has gate crashed this business is the regulator. Um, um, and, and let me not say the regulation, let me just say the government, right? Um, because there's the regulation, there's a the preservation of infrastructure, um, and there's also the, the ease of doing business, if you like, right? Um, and we know, we did some of the studies, maybe 30 to 40% of the cost of, of real estate is imposed on you by things you have to do because of the regulatory environment. And um, if this industry is to survive, and thrive, then we need to focus on that. We need to remove that 40% cost. There's no point dancing around these issues. Um, it's just far too expensive to build it, rent it, and make money. Um, and to do that, we need to reduce the cost. And we're not going to reduce the cost by buying cheaper bricks or paint. We're only going to reduce the cost by reducing the cost of entry. Land has to be cheaper. The process of registering your land has to be cheaper. The process of getting your applications for planning has to be cheaper and faster. You need power, you need roads, you need sewage systems, you need water. It's not the job of the financier, the client, or the real estate to do that. See whose job it is. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so very much. So uh, I'd like to thank our panelists, um, a former from the IFC, Amelia Nii, and Paul, uh, and I think that on behalf of everyone who's listened, I really have to appreciate your contributions to today's short panel, quite impactful, and um, I wish you a good afternoon. Thank you very much. Paul, does this meet your experiential experience what you said about uh, real estate experience. Uh, <laughs> wonderful, 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 wonderful. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, at, the, at this point in time, I just want to quickly recognize the following people. Um, uh, amongst everybody in this room today um, is a dignitary. I must say, because you carefully select audience and um, um, uh, gathering of people, but just let quickly mention this point and then we'll come back to mention every other person, uh, also very important. This is Toke Benson, uh, special advisor to Lagos State Governor, wherever you are, can we celebrate you? Wow, wow, welcome. That's representing our governor, action governor, Son Wolu. Uh, also, I'd like to make mention of Dr. 
Toshegu Aino, the chairman of Odua Investment Group. Wherever you are, please let me celebrate you. Wow, wow, wow. Welcome, 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 welcome. And of course, um, my learned Sikh, um, who is also here, the former president of the uh, Institute of Charter Secretaries of Nigeria, Mr. Tunde Busari, SAN, where is he? Wow, 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 wow. Nice, nice to see you again, sir. Nice to see you again. And of course, let me also mention Professor Bami Tale Omoli, the Pro Chancellor of Ekiti State University. Wow, thank you. And I must celebrate your, your punctuality because I think you're one of the people that came in and, and please let me celebrate him. You really, uh, you know, I mean, it was here on time. And thank you very much, sir. May God increase you. Um, so now, I've mentioned his name, but it's somebody that really I respect a lot, other day publishers. Uh, it kind of through, uh, change the paradigm. By the way, I'm going to talk about paradigm later. Change the paradigm about book publishing in Nigeria, other day publishers. We lawyers know what they are done. And um, um, Prince Yemi Adefolo is part of that epoch making, vanguard breaking generation. I want to celebrate our chairman, Prince Adifolo. Welcome, please let me celebrate it. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, today, um, we have partnerships in law, uh, but the... we have many partnerships, but not very few, very few are still standing. And one of the few that is still standing, in fact, the longest of the jury, and that you follow. Uh, is the law firm that we all refer to in terms of um, reference point for longevity of partnership. Please let me celebrate our chairman once again for being part of that. Now, I would not, I must, I must do this. I must celebrate my, my, Kabisio and Yakbalun, but You are really welcome, sir. Israel Ines Oba Abdulasiu. Among Bolaho, Lawa, Abisobu, to the owner of Ireland, Kabiasu, you're welcome. We're talking about real estate, and if you want to build a house at a minute, you better start clap very well. Clap very well. Kabiasu, I will do this. I will do this. I will do this. I will do this. There will be a lot. They are not good to you, but I'm good to you. Let me check. All right. And, um, all right, another person, in fact, I that respect, I have a lot of respect for, human, humble, very humble, but actually carries a lot of weight. And I'm talking about Reverend Tunde Lemo, the former deputy governor of Central Bank, the chairman now of Titan. Still quintessential humble, humble humility at excellence. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Um, like I said, we're going to go on, and uh, right at this time, uh, I want to say big thank you to Ifama Azioka for whatever you are right now watching. Amelia, thank you very much. Uh, um, astute, astute and prolific um, engagement you gave us there. And insight, wonderful insights too. Thank you very much. Um, at this point in time, I would like to, I don't know whether our sponsors are available. Uh, chairman, yes, yes, but before I read the chairman, I'd like to call on, oh, ah, somebody that was not around when I was calling the names or is around. Uh, this man can take my name out of the roll call of lawyers. So I have to be very careful about it. Uh, due respect to my MBA president, Nigerian Bar Association president, uh, Olu Akwata Esquire. Please, let me celebrate him. Let me celebrate him, please. Uh, so right now, I'm going to call on um, the chairman to give his um, remarks about this event, about what we're here for. And don't forget, we're here for a book launch as well as something very prolific, celebrating the author, celebrating uh, the brilliance of this man who has changed the paradigm in the landscape of uh, real estate in Nigeria. So uh, let me call on Dr. Yemi Adif please, Yemi Adifu, to give his um, opening remarks or uh, remarks about this year. And thereafter, uh, uh, 
Uh, MBA President Olua Pata would also give a short remark about this event. Thank you very much. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you are all very pleased to be here and to share this wonderful location with our brother and our friend, Kim Ogunero. Listening to, listening to all the eggheads, the practitioners of the business who have um, done a wonderful job this morning in the webinar, one cannot but be inspired. I just begin to understand how an uncle of mine felt many years ago. He must have been about my age. And he used to say, ah, I came too early. This is old age staring at me. He said, and life is becoming better. I came too early. And I used to say to him, but you've had a good life. He said, yes. But when you're getting close to the point of departure, you don't want to go. They say heaven is a wonderful place, but since we're going to be there for eternity, we don't have to go in a hurry. I wish I was in the set of those people. I think I came a bit too early. Even though in our time, we did try our best. I also got into real estate too early. At 33, 34, we were building the first high rise in Lagos, on Lagos Island, on Catholic Mission. Maybe I should have stayed with real estate. I may have been a very rich man now, or a very poor man. But we are here to celebrate our brother, Kim Oguniro, who has been a wonderful person, astute, focused very severely. His mind is on, on, his, on where he's headed. And in everything that he has set his hands upon, he has made the very best you know, of it. An academic's academic, he left, went into a corporate life, and from, he showed that he was not just a lawyer, a lawyer in management. And he's done quite a number of things, including logistics management, uh, corporate planning, uh, property management, and so on and so forth. And finally, the eagle landed on property. And uh, it's turned out to be one of the original thinkers in the area. You know, many years ago, Professor Taslim Elias, who became president of the World Court, he was our professor of law in the University of Lagos. And in delivering a lecture, he said law was social engineering. We were in part one or part two, and we were just shivering, engineering care. We ran away from that sector because of mathematics and all that. He said it was social engineering, supplying the knots and bolts of the society. Here is King showing how the creation of instruments to deal with problems of this particular sector can go a long way into unlocking the tremendous potentials that exist in this economy, but which is lying prostrate.
The societies that make progress are the societies that try to solve the problems very seriously, but we just see it on our problems. Kim has shown that real estate is actually a money game, it's a finance game. For us to make progress, and as has been pointed out by one of the speakers, the cost of entry is just too high. The cost of buying land, the cost of getting certificate of occupancy, that takes almost forever. And it is so debilitating. And it shouldn't be. Why do we specialize in making things more difficult? Other societies try to make them easier. But we will look at it, we will tighten it further. Regulation, regulation, regulation. I read in the book the kind of returns which people who had invested in REITs in which they were able to get. The only way we're going to be able to create prosper prosperity is to use law as social engineering and unlock those potentials and do things right. Kim has become one of the original thinkers, one of the creative thinkers in this very, very uh, important part of our national life. And I congratulate him. I also congratulate myself in a way because he told me once, at the beginning of the pandemic, I wrote a piece, we just went viral. I was saying how to spend your, your COVID-19, you know, uh, uh, period. Don't, send, don't spend it bemoaning yourself. Look at what you can do. And he told me that the book that he had been wanting to write, he has written it. I congratulate you and I congratulate myself. I also did a project during the time, but we're not going to bring that one out here. I thank you very much for joining Kim this morning and his family in celebrating him this morning. But I assure you, I have no doubt in my mind that this is just the beginning. Kim, we shall be looking, we shall be looking at it. We will not spend our whole day regretting. We will say that we handed over to people who have done it better than ourselves. I congratulate you. Thank you, Kavisa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well captured. Well captured. Of course, we all know Kim as a man that is so brilliant of intellect. Not just an ordinary uh, cerebral person, but very, very deep in terms of engagement of intellect. Um, so we're not surprised. We're not surprised. Uh, you know, I told you something about paradigm, the word paradigm. You know, is a paradigm shifter and major difference. Uh, we both, I mean, he went to a school that was an L shaped school, and I also went to a school that's an L shaped school. You know, his own school, you know, those school that you see in those, uh, uh, those uh, our primer leader that's L. Very cool. So he showed me where he went to school. I also went to that kind of school, but he said that God has blessed him with intellect differently. So one day I was with him and I was trying to impress him with my English. Uh, village boy, I gave the village boy. So I, I was telling him, look, um, things have changed. It has now become a new paradigm. A new paradigm. And you know, <laughs> I, you know, I was so ebullient with the word a paradigm. You know, and he was just looking at me. <laughs> when he finished, he said, Bros, what's your paradigm? Paradigm, paradigm, paradigm. So, welcome again to the celebration of this ebullient man, a man deep, deep, deep in intellect. I'm going to call on the chairman. Um, yes. I, I know, I know, I know, Prof. Very well. I'm going to call right now uh, the MBA president. Uh, to come and give us uh, his remark. Uh, this is the man that we all celebrate in our world, in the Yoga world, a game changer. In fact, a paradigm changer. <laughs> so, <laughs> please help me celebrate Ula Pata Esquire. Thank you very much. Thank you. In 1972, in 1972, and it is because of gentlemen like yourself, sir, that Uluwapata standing here before you, a purely commercial lawyer, 
can say I am president of the bar today. Because as someone, as a wise man once said, that I've been able to see further, it's because of the shoulders of, of those that I stood on. So sir, I give you and your brother, my father, Senator Dikbo Udujeni, a lot of the credit. And I thank you very much. Kabiyasi. Kabiyasi. So good to see you, sir. May your reign be long. And may God continue to bless you as you sit on the throne of your fathers. Ladies and gentlemen, I am most delighted to be here this morning. And um, when the author, Mr. Kim Ogunio, mentioned to me the fact that this book will be launched today, and we started talking months ago, I said to him that I will be here personally. I said I will be here personally. So we must give thanks to God because man proposes and God disposes. So God made it possible for me to be here personally. And I wanted to be here personally because it, is, it was important that I come to do justice, that I come to pay my respects to this incredible gentleman. Now, Kim, don't mind me. Your head may just swell a little bit, but don't mind me. But it is easy, genius. It's not hard to know or not, it's not hard to recognize genius. That individual who can flourish in any space because it is innate, it's inborn. And that is why Kim can be an exceptional lecturer. He can practice law. He can be a consummate administrator, a boardroom guru. He has excelled in everything that he has done. And I'm proud of you. A lot of us hold you. And you know, for many years, Kim and I engaged principally when he was already a property guru. So I, I keep on forgetting, or I kept on forgetting that he was actually a lawyer like myself because he did what he did so well. So to him, for him to have even found time now to put down his thoughts, and Mr. Chairman is correct, you are one of the original thinkers in this space. For you to have found time to put down your thoughts, your ideas, immutably as you have done. Again, kudos to you. I'm extremely proud of you. And, and you know, you know, we lawyers, we like to, we like to uh, take credit. And so as president of the MBA, I would take credit that one of our own has excelled so well in this space. And I'm sure Leonard Senior Advocate Tunde Busari and Leonard Senior Advocate uh, Dr. Omoebo will join me in claiming Kim back very quickly as, uh, as our own. Now, I'm also here because one of the challenges that I have encountered in the course of my practice of law is that of specialization and capacity building. So you find out that you go around Nigeria and people complain that there are too many lawyers in Nigeria. Meanwhile, I say to them that it's, that it's just that there are too many lawyers doing the same thing. It's not that we have too many lawyers. There are more lawyers in California than there are in Nigeria. But in Nigeria, there are too many lawyers doing the same thing. So you can imagine how delighted I am that Kim has opened up yet another aspect of legal practice that young ones can pursue and make a living as lawyers. And let them under understand that this is the largest economy in Africa and lawyers are supposed to be servicing this economy. So I am also here to quickly let Kim know that you know, the, the reward for hard work is more work because one of the things that we are championing at the MBA now is capacity building so that our lawyers will stop. Right now, we have lawyers who have abandoned the profession because they think there's nothing to do. So there are some of them are going into Uber driving and makeup artistry. Not that there's anything wrong with those professions, but I would rather a lawyer leaves law because they want to leave law not because they think there's nothing to do. 
Kim has shown us that in real estate, there is so much to do. And Kim, you will not believe that only three weeks ago, I encountered a lecturer in law who told me that she was teaching property law. So I engaged her, I said, so what do you think about REITs? And it was a blank stare. So it was obvious she was hearing about REITs for the first time. And she teaches property law. So you see that, Kim, you have a lot of work to do. We have, re, um, we have uh, kick-started our Institute of Continuing Legal Education, the MBA Institute of Continuing Legal Education. It was already there. We have re-energized it. And I'm happy to announce that uh, Kim Ogunero has just been appointed adjunct lecturer. <laughs> at the Institute to take property law. Uh, thank God our new normal, everything is virtual. You don't need to leave home. You will just give us a number of hours every week. Let's teach the new generation of lawyers coming up because it's simple economics. If all our lawyers are doing the same thing, their price will drop. That is why they will be paid 20,000 or 15,000 a month. But if Kim has taught them property law, they will be sought after. Their value will very quickly go up. So I'm here as president of MBA to say thank you for accepting the appointment. But um, having said that, um, there are many more books we need from you, sir. Uh, property law is diverse. It's a huge area. And, um, and, but I know that this one that you have touched on is so topical. It is something that uh, it, it will be, it will be, it will take pride of place in the libraries of real estate practitioners, lawyers, uh, the financiers, you know, and, uh, and then hopefully we can get it right in this, uh, in this jurisdiction. I congratulate you, extremely delighted to be part of this event. And um, if I have to run away, I'm sure you understand, but I'll try and stay as much as I can. Congratulations and thank you all. We're going forward, but before I go, on, I like to give uh, um, honor to these fellows. And this is another um, individual that beloved, astute, celebrated, but very humble. Professor Ige, Boledoku, the Dean of Faculty of Law, University of Lagos, wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Humble, humble, humble. Reverend J. Aydada, Chairman. Livestock Feeds PLC, wherever you are, please we'll celebrate you, we'll celebrate you. Another good friend of the house, an absolute and very, very action-driven individual. And I'm talking about Ashwaju Toby Lawa, the MD CEO, Lagos Good Investment Company. Ogati, you're welcome, you're welcome, sir. You're welcome, you're welcome. And um, right now, I need to, uh, before I call the next person, I need to let you know that we, the essence of our gathering, while we're celebrating Kim, uh, we are actually talking about the book that like, Kim wrote. So please uh, don't leave this room without being a partaker of taking container load of those books home, uh, please. And um, it just is a very simple process. If you want to engage in that uh, purchase or kind the container, I'll just uh, tap the QR code at the back of this. And if you don't, if you cannot do that, just open to the uh, third page. You will see all the bank details. Once you have done the bank details, uh, just tell one of the ushers and you'll tell them that you have done the bill. Um, if the minimum amount for one book should be like one million or one billion, you know, but it can be maximum enough to allow you to pay an installment, installment of 24 hours, you know. So, uh, and by the way, if you want to do in dollars and in pounds, uh, we also are kind enough to uh, put the um, account numbers for the dollars and pounds there, uh, just like in Naira, make it one billion or one billion, one million pounds. It's just nothing for a king. Now, but please don't go away without getting any of the books. And uh, please uh, uh, get for the library, get copies and get copies. The ad copies have become circulated around as well. Right now, I'm going to call the representative of our their as governor of Lagos State. Uh, this is Joe Kev Benson to come and speak 
to us um, on behalf of Lagos the Governor. Please a round of applause for him. We celebrate the governor. He's actually doing the work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good morning, all. Um, Mr. Chairman and all the dignitaries here, my former colleague, um, the king of Iruland, Oba Omogbola Olawal. The president of the MBA, the most dynamic one. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to be taking glory for this as well, because I'm also a lawyer. So we're going to be congratulating ourselves today. Congratulations to us all here. Um, I, I actually scribbled a, a few things down here when I heard um, Paul speaking. He referred to us as the intruder. So I'm going to speak as the intruder in the real estate sector. Um, so I'm the special advisor to the governor, but I'm also championing something called the Lagos State Real Estate Regulatory Authority. And the reason for the birth of this regulatory authority is just to sanitize the industry, regulate what is going on in the industry, not necessarily to intrude, but also be partners in progress with um, people in the industry to clarify some of the things that have been going on. We've had a lot of professionals in the industry who have also been battered by the wrongdoings in the industry. So we thought there was need for us to come in and clean up that mess. Also launder the image of Lagos. Lagos is supposed to be the real estate investment destination in Africa, and if possible, the world. The returns on real estate in Lagos State is not comparable to a lot of places in the world. So it is important for us to make sure that Lagos retains that post, and we make sure that the people who are actually giving us a bad name in the industry are actually taken out or at least curtailed. So that's the reason why we have come in as intruders in the sector. So Mr. Paul, we're not intruders, we want to be partners in progress. Also, um, some of the things that were mentioned um, on the ease of doing business are the things that we've been trying to work on. We've had um, to come together as a government, looked at the things in the industry that are hindering business. And so we thought of the ease of doing business. And we're actually going to be launching an EGIS platform where everybody can go on, apply for their land titles, do whatever transactions they want to do online from the comfort of their offices so that you do not have to come to the Lands Bureau and be faced with a lot of hindrance and um, the usual bureaucratic government process. So we are looking at launching that. At the same time, we're going to have a platform for the um, planning permits and building permits. Uh, we want to have a 28 days um, application period where people can go on, go on to that site as well, put in their applications and get their permits within 28 days. So we're doing everything to make sure that this industry grows. It's an industry that we cannot overlook. It's an industry that our, our dear governor too has been a part of when he was um, the MD of LSDPC. So I can tell you that for everything that we're doing in the Lagos state government, it is to make sure that this industry grows. The real estate industry is a very large industry with a very humongous value chain. And you must appreciate the fact that we as a government are committed to making sure that every aspect of the value chain is touched from the professionals to the artisans. We would act as um, regulators in that, in that space and we'll make sure that we want to be partners in progress with you. Mr. Guniro, um, I can actually say that you are also a member of this government um, as the chairman of the Lagos State Building Investment Company. So we're congratulating one of ours in moving the industry forward. And I think today it is also not just the Nigerian Bar Association, but also the Lagos State Government. So congratulations. Thank you. Um, right now is the time for us to have um, a sponsor, uh, one of the sponsors of this event to come and give us um, uh, a little bit about what they do and what this is all about. Uh, let me call Aibe. Please let me celebrate Mr. Fred Aibe as he comes up. Please. Mr. 
Mr. Chairman, Your Royal Highness, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my name is Frederick Ahibi, CEO Eximia Realities Company Limited. I'm very honored to stand here before you to acknowledge the immense contribution of our friends, friends of our CEO, in ensuring that we host a successful book launch. Friends like um, Aircom Nigeria Limited, Mr. Yemi Dou, Olali Kon Yusuf, SAN and Co. Visible Value Chain Limited, Lagos State Building Investment Company, Home for Me Nigeria Limited. And also, we'd like to state that we at Eximia Reality Company Limited are proud sponsors of this event. And at Eximia, we have developed projects in line with our goal to, to lead the world through Africa. I'd like you to um, take, I'd like to take three minutes of your time to just look at one of our projects that we are currently going to um, develop in Mende, Maryland. This is just one of many. We are currently um, developing a project in, in Lekki right now, 48 apartments. And we've also uh, handed over a project in Abuja, you know, just in, in, our, in our drive to deliver excellent product to our esteemed customers. Thank you. Thank you. 
imagine living in that place. You know, even want to go out again. That is Parada Gandhi or Parada Gandhi. Yeah, uh, right now we're going to go into the main event of today. I think that is gone, so we are just going to rush into the main event of the day. Um, right, we're going to have uh, a, the book review, the book that we have come here to, to present to the public, will be reviewed uh, by no other person, but a very eminent jurist uh, and lecturer and writer, uh, Dr. Omar Obai Omar Ebo, a senior advocate of Nigeria, who will come in and have the book reviewed. And so that from then on, we go on and have all the things on the way we are to do it. Thank you very much. Um, we want to say, please welcome, welcome Dr. Dr. Omar Ebo. Please, please let, me, let me celebrate him. Thank you very much. Kabesi, the Oniru of Iru land. Oba, Omogbola Honlawa. My respect, sir. The chairman of the occasion, Prince Yemi Adifulu Mefar. The distinguished author, Mr. Hakim Oguniro. Special guests of honor who were with us both physically and uh, online. The discussants, representative of the publishers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I consider it an honor to be invited to review the book, The Law and Practice of Real Estate Investment Trusts with highlights of African rate models, authored by Mr. Hakim Oguniro, an erudite scholar, a former university law lecturer and Fulbright visiting scholar at the Yale Law School, United States of, Amer of America, an illustrious practitioner in the field of real estate development and management in which he has written on. Without a doubt, the author has brought to bear his practical experience spanning several decades in the industry of real estate development, in which he rose to the pinnacle of his career in Nigeria. And in writing the book, he has simplified what is otherwise a complex area of the law. The law of real estate investment trust derives its complexity from the fact that it is relatively novel in Nigeria. And then it straddles the laws of real estate, the laws of investment, economics, trusts, securitization, taxation, company law, and public offerings, among others. So for one man to bring to bear and write on what you can consider seven or eight standalone legal topics in Nigeria. It's not an easy fit at all. A student of any one of these laws will appreciate how challenging it is, whereas the author has combined all of them in his treatise and produced what is no doubt in my mind, a seminal masterclass that is and will remain an aid memoir and reference source for all time. Real estate investment trusts were first introduced in the United States of America in 1960 with the aim of mobilizing funds and thereby provide opportunities for investors to enjoy the benefits and advantages of investing in real estate without financing its entire development or construction. It is a trust that pulls capital from several investors and uses it to build, purchase, and or manage income yielding real estate or related assets for corporate, for residential, and for infrastructural purposes. The panel of discussants appear to have concentrated more 
on the residential aspect of rates? Well, it looks as if so far in Nigeria, that's the most popular class in which rates have been used. But in reality, you can use them for corporate and infrastructural purposes as well. And we know how infrastructurally deficient we are in Nigeria. So this is a very useful tool to help us bridge that infrastructural deficit. Part of its benefit lies in the realization that in view of its capital intensive nature, the government alone cannot deliver on the real estate and infrastructural needs of its citizens. And the government's efforts must be complemented by the private sector. Rates have over the years become one of the vital investment vehicles in the economy of many countries. It is estimated that the global market capitalization of rates is currently about $3.5 trillion. $3.5 trillion. So we can imagine the pool of funds that rates represent globally. globally. With countries such as the United States of America, Germany, Brazil, Australia, Canada, Japan, and Singapore leading the way. Our records show that the first Nigerian Real Estate Investment Trust, NRATE, was introduced in 2007 by Sky Shelter Fund with an initial public offering, IPO of 2 billion Naira, just 2 billion. This was followed in 2008 by Union Homes Hybrid Rate with an IPO of 50 billion Naira. The USCN Property Development Company, UPDC Rate, was introduced into the market in 2013 with an IPO of 30 billion Naira. And this was midwives by our illustrious author of today, Mr. Hakim Oguniro, as the then chief executive officer of the issuing company. The UPDC rate, which in midwife, is widely acclaimed as the most successful one in Nigeria to date. And as the author himself acknowledges, the knowledge and exposure garnered through this process became the critical success factors in writing the book. So he has not kept that knowledge and experience to himself in his generosity, generosity he's committed it in book form and exposed it to the benefit of all of us to learn from. The author notes in his introduction that real estate is essentially a financing game that has been a recurring decimal. Funding is a key driver of real estate development. And the success or otherwise of any real estate business is intricately tied to its ability to match its assets and liabilities sustainably over the long term. Understanding this fundamental fact underscores the necessity for the development of robust structures for capital mobilization for real estate, end of his quote. The end result of that crops of the book is the author's effort at a 175 page scholarly and practical text divided into 10 easy to read and knowledge packed chapters. The author in 10 chapters has masterfully put together a solid work of reference, which both the legal practitioner interested in the law of rates and the ordinary investor interested in an understanding of rates will find to be an invaluable guide. In so doing, the author breaks down what is often a very technical and complicated area of the law into simple, interesting, and easily comprehensible topics. I congratulate the author, Mr. Hakim Oguniro, on a very well researched brilliantly analyzed, eloquently written, and elegantly packaged book. You can see how 
beautiful the book is, how appealing to the eyes it is. The book will be of great assistance to legal practitioners, to regulators, policy makers, and lawmakers on the relatively novel and fledgling subject in Nigeria, but with great benefits to the overall economy. The publishers must also be commended for their editorial and finishing work, as well as the attractive packaging which will contribute which all contribute to the high quality of the work. It is a book that should take its pride of place in every discerning library. Now, as some kind of academic myself, I have um, summarized the 10 chapters of the book in my book review. However, I know how meticulous Akim is with time. You can see how he has ordered the program. Time is allotted for every single segment. So I don't want to take too much of your time. In fact, he's even gone to the extent of summarizing the chapters themselves in the program. <laughs> so you could very well refer to that summary. Now in concluding, I will say that it will be remiss of me not to say something briefly about my relationship with the author over the years. We first met in 1981, when we both gained admission into the Faculty of Law of the University of Lagos. And I acknowledge today's Dean, Professor Bolle Dioku, congratulations, sir. The University of Lagos Faculty of Law, no doubt is the preeminent faculty of laws in Nigeria. Is that true or false? Thank you very much. Excuse me, please, if, if um, you don't believe me. And I also even acknowledge our chairman of today. We're privileged to follow in his footsteps and graduate from the Faculty of Laws of the University of Lagos. Thank you, sir, for bracing the trail for us. Now in 1981, when we gained admission, I think, no, this must have been a second year. We were taught what was called at that time land law. Land law by the inimitable professor Jalili Adebisi Omotola, senior advocate of Nigeria of blessed memory, may his soul rest in peace, who later became the vice chancellor of the university. It will be recalled that Professor Mottola was the prime architect, the prime architect of the Land Use Act of 1978, which remains the cornerstone of a land tenure system in Nigeria till date. That tutelage under Professor Mottola, both at undergraduate and postgraduate levels, admittedly fired the young Hakim Ogeniron's passion for the subject which he later made a career of, spanning several decades and culminating in his appointment as the Chief Executive Officer of UACN Property Development Company in 2011. He retired from there after an illustrious career in 2018 to establish Eximia Realty Company which has in a short space of time become one of Nigeria's leading real estate development companies. We're just treated to one of their projects and we can see several other projects here in the brochure. It is also noteworthy that in recognition of his vast experience in the field, he was appointed chairman of the Lagos Building and Investment Company, PLC by the executive governor of Lagos State. The special assistant alluded to that. So when they say there's no hiding place for a goldfish, my brother and friend here, Akim, he represents that statement in full. In all my interactions with the author, I found him a focused, disciplined, sociable, amiable, and a high achieving person driven by passion for excellence. 
He's also a very loyal friend with a knack for bringing people of diverse backgrounds together. The proof of this is in a class set, the University of Lagos class set, which he has organized and led admirable for some time now, bringing many of us former classmates together and organizing initiatives to ensure that we give back to our alma mater and support one another in our journey through life. I'm sure a learned dean will attest to that. I'm sure I speak the mind of all our classmates <clears throat> as I congratulate Mr. Hakim Ogunero once again on behalf of the University of Lagos Faculty of Law Set of 1981 to 1984 on this laudable achievement, and we all wish him the very best in his future endeavors. Congratulations, dear brother. Thank you very much for listening to me patiently. Thank you, sir. Thank you very, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Omebo. Thank you very much. A brilliant, brilliant um, review of the book. And so that is the book we came here to do the presentation of it. Uh, there is the hard copy, and there is the soft uh, hard back, and then the uh, soft back. Like I said, um, in multiples of millions, uh, you can, we can do the delivery by trailer. You can even do the delivery by shipload if you want. Uh, don't be shy. Don't be shy at all. There's no whistleblower here at all. So just go ahead and do the needful. Uh, brilliant. The only thing that I didn't like about what uh, Dr. Mabai said is great affair. Great affair. <laughs> Great if you're SRO, SRO, it's okay. <laughs> you are here. Uh, okay. Uh, great. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. They want to, they want to put us down. Oh. Great if you're, sir. All of that universities are can't have it, sir. Yes, sir. Can you imagine, sir? Can you imagine, sir? Let me go, come here. Can you imagine? <laughs> Great affair. All of that, <laughs> all of that universities are. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, uh, I, I was going to introduce the person that is shouting great now. I don't think I want to introduce him again, <laughs> but I will, I will have to do it. Please help me celebrate Mr. Dr. Bayo Olubemi. Um, the President Chartered Institute of Bankers. Please help me celebrate this man. Very amiable, diverse, and astute in all respect, astute administrators. Please, you're welcome, sir. Mr. Bay, you're welcome. And also, let me welcome uh, Mr. Ray Atelier, the Managing Director of PG Consulting Limited. Uh, very soon, I'll have to take my leave from this beat, but let me quickly acknowledge the following people who are here. Like I said, this. This room is filled with power brokers, uh, influence makers, and a lot of people out there. Uh, but I just want to quickly mention their names, um, those ones I can mention them, so that they know that they're acknowledged. Uh, Fala, Mrs. Fala, Olusonya, wherever you are, please acknowledge you. Uh, please let me give them a round of applause. Um, um, I also acknowledge uh, Reverend J.I.D. Dada. Wherever you are, you're welcome, please. Uh, you're welcome, please. Mrs. Ini Abimbola, please, wherever you are, can I see? Please, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, I want to also welcome for Mrs. Fumi Ekundayo. These are MDs, CEOs, STL trustees, and the rest of them. I welcome you. I welcome. And, you know, I need to really get apology. And all this, I'm not done i've done a great injustice to uh, one person who should have been very very uh, welcome celebrated as well because without him more or less um, this would not have been possible and that is professor yabadi Obunero. come in professor come I, I call her professor because equity regards that which ought to be done as done so welcome that is our the life of our Akim Ogunero, please, we celebrate you. Thank you for taking care of him.
thank you for taking care of him. We we'll celebrate you. We we'll celebrate you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, at this point in time, um, I have to also uh, acknowledge um, the very presence of my planet colleague uh, who has taken the colleague, is it colleagues or colleagery or whatever to the next level in terms of I'm sure if uh, Apata was still here, he would have said, this is one of the people we are talking about, but she has taken it to another level and very professionally so, talking about a compare of excellence, comedian who has done so much, do a lawyer, but she's doing excellently well and an influence maker in that space. Please let me welcome the passion's boss uh, to the pulpit today. That's the pulpit. Thank you very, very much, Pastor Tomi. It's so interesting when you see um, people wear a different hat. I'm used to him standing on the pulpit and preaching in church. So seeing him do MC now is another interesting, interesting change. Pastor Tomi is the one person that will just call you from the blues and be praying for you. Then you now ask yourself, is today my birthday? <laughs> But I know you have done an excellent job. Please put your hands together for Pastor Tim. Before I leave, don't mind her though. Before I leave, I need to give um, respect and regards to this beloved woman of God, Reverend Mrs. N. Onuzo. A uh, place wherever she is. Where, wow, mommy. Welcome, 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 welcome. I celebrate you. I celebrate you. So, Pastor, you're on your own. Anything you say now will be used against you in law court. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, when I came in, uh, Pastor Stomi said to me, they are too quiet. They are too serious. Welcome, bosse. I said, eh, hey, this is how they put you on the spot. They say they are too quiet. They, you, are, you have to think of something to make people laugh now. You are, you are doing the exam. But I wanted to say something funny until the speaker started bragging about Unilag. Oh, do me. I was, I was pained. Unilag, a school that we just changed the name from Moshuda Biovada back to Unilag. How? Eh? And then Pastor Tommy now came and started shouting, great affair. How? There's a word that is greater than great. It's called greatest. And there's only one university that we use that for. It's called the university. See, I did not say university. The University of Ibadan. That's the only university in Nigeria that you put the before you pronounce it. It is the greatest university and you know, the greatest faculty, you know, so, so. It's all people's home. That everybody will grow old eventually. <laughs> he said it's all people's home. <laughs> Please celebrate, celebrate with me the former Vice Chancellor of University of Ife. The prestigious Obafemi Awodo University. And, but the truth is, whatever university you went to, as long as you are a lawyer, they use the word lawyer for you. Ah, we are distinguished. We are, people are threatened by us, I don't understand. Even when you are doing comedy, other comedians are threatened. So we try not to... I try not to remind them who I really am, except for people like Uncle Akim. They are the people that gather everybody together. I don't know how he does it. He's the one person that we do a program. All pastors, we gather together. He's the one that we do a program. He's an event planner for IG. By now, you will see people dancing. He's the one that we do a program. Everybody will be serious. He's the one that we do a program. It will be like they are doing an exam. He's the one, I don't know. He will even carry gun go and be playing. He's a praise and worship leader. The man is doing everything. But when I realized that it was two hours, 30 minutes in traffic coming here, I said to myself, Bosse, even if they finish the program, there's one thing that is consistent with Uncle Akim. The food is always on point. <laughs> <laughs> so even if there's no event, just go and eat. Don't worry. And as soon as I got here, he did not disappoint me. Once he saw me, he said, eh -huh, when we tell you to live on the island, you will not hear. <laughs> you see how long it took you to get here. Uncle Akim, if you like, say it every day. I like mainland. <laughs> 
Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome. And I celebrate you for taking time out of your very busy schedules to be here today. We do not take it for granted because we understand how busy, busy, busy you are. We we'll also like to remind you that the hard copy of the book is 8,000 Naira and the soft copy of the book is 5,000 Naira, but that is for the general public. For you distinguished ladies and gentlemen here, we have our table at the back. All you need to do is signal and then they will help to scan. You can also scan directly yourself and make transfers. We need plenty, plenty of launching to make this book available to as many people as possible. I know people like um, Uncle Akim, he, he, he's too rich. He's too rich. He would like to give the book away to everybody free of charge. But then, <laughs> but then his wife likes money. So, <laughs> so, we are, so we are launching it because of her, not really because of Uncle Akim. Uh, so please uh, let us know as soon as you're ready. Testimonials for the book will be three minutes each um, because we do realize that you're all very busy, busy people. Can we welcome the first person, Mustafa Nje? I hope I got that right. Mustafa Nje, all the way from Taf Africa Global Gambia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. Um, uh... Thanks for having me in for my testimonial. Uh, but yeah, the soul name is Njai. I'm sure those that have met me before will know it's Mustafa Njai. Um, uh, very quickly, I would like to give my testimony on, on Hakim and this book. Um, uh, I have known Hakim um, and I've lived with him for several years. Um, on both personal and professional grounds, and I can tell that he is cerebral, and solution driven. I am sure many of us who know Hakim would agree that he is an inspiration to many, just as he is to me. His presence on any real estate platform or event gives a solid endorsement to such event. He has consistently shown that for the real estate sector to achieve optimum performance and results, Practitioners must continue to advance and proffer solutions that are workable and sustainable. As a leading industry player, I know the challenges developers face in financing the development of quality estates, whether commercial or residential. Even when you have a beautiful vision and design, finance remains the vehicle through which such vision design can be actualized. Several financing methodologies have been deployed by different practitioners, stakeholders, including loans, mortgages, etc. But we are yet to bridge the financing gap in this sector. Again, this is where Hakim comes in as a solution provider. Hakim delved into the rims of REITs, actively participated in REITs, and today, we have an opportunity to share from his world of experience as an industry giant. Tough Africa Global Limited commends you for such quality book, which we consider a robust addition to the real estate sphere in Africa and an, and an, and, and an expression of your pedigree as shown in the different roles you have played in the real estate sector in Nigeria. Hakim, thank you very much. And my brother, good luck and devil. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very, very brief and very well done. Uh, one more time, can we put our hands together for Mustafa Injie from Gambia. Can we also welcome right away the CEO Lexon Capital Abuja, Nigeria, Ifi Umum Makwe. While the technical issues are being sorted out, I would like to um, take two minutes of your time and tell you a story. And this story, I have said it everywhere that lawyers have gathered together. Because my mother insists that I must say this story. 
if I don't say this story, she would disown me because people really need to know that I am a lawyer. So after graduation and I was called to bar in the year 2000, my mom said, so we need to get you a job or you want to go back for your master's? And I said, I am done with reading because law is my second degree. I said, I would never read again. I don't want master's. I don't want PhD. I just want to make money. And as we went along, my mom said, when are you going to start working? I said, when are you going to start working? I said, ah, mommy, I don't want to work. I want to be a comedian. She said, eh? My mom is Ondo, so you can understand. The first thing they do when they are angry is say, eh? So my mom said, eh? I said, I want to be a comedian. She said, she, um, those people that make people laugh. I said, yes. Where did you get it into your head that you are funny? I said, I don't have to be funny. I just have to say funny things. <laughs> she said, no. So you want to do what? I said, I want to be a comedian. She said, good. So I sent you to law school to go and become a lawyer so that people can be calling me Mama D. Law. That's in the Yoruba language, the mother of a lawyer. You now decided you want to be a jester. So now I'll be walking on the road and people will be saying, there goes Mrs. Ogumboye, the mother of a jester. I said, mommy, you don't get it. She said, no, it's not about you, it's about me. It's not about what people call you, it's what people call me, the mother of a jester. They should be calling me the mother of a lawyer. I said, mommy, but they are making a lot of money. She said, I don't care. What, what do you want your state name to be? I said, the fascious boss said, she said, I bind that name in this house. I cancel that name. I render that name powerless in Jesus' name. She said, say amen. I said, amen. Okay. So the first week I jumped the fence and you will not appreciate it when I say I jumped the fence now if you did not know me before before I was like three times this size so jumping the fence was a lot of work <laughs> uncle is confirming he said Ben when he saw me he said you are now the fascist daughter so I jumped the fence and I came back and I gave my mother 100,000 naira and my mother looked at me and said hmm lepa two weeks later I jumped the fence again I came back and gave her 200,000 naira. My mother looked at me and said, uh-uh, this from comedy? I said, yes. She said, hmm, lepa baby. By the third time, I didn't need to jump the fence. I just strolled out. And I came back and I gave my mother 500,000. Now, now remember, my mother was a civil servant and a teacher at that. So 500 naira was like her one year salary. So when I gave her 500,000 naira, my mother looked at me and said, lepa shios bosse. You were only three months in this, my stomach, when I knew by the Spirit of God you would be a comedian. <laughs> Money can change anybody's mind. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can we welcome the MD CEO, STL Trustees Limited, Lagos, Fumi Ekundayo. <laughs> Let's keep clapping till she gets here. She's a very shy person. You're welcome, ma'am. Uh, she, she's the real lawyer. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, your royal highness of Niru of Iruland, my sister, Dr. Professor in waiting here for the Oguniro. My sister, essay to the governor on housing. Please, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to stand on existing protocols in the interest of time. First, I'd like to congratulate um, the author, Mr. Akim Ogunio, on this fine intellectual masterpiece, which I can confidently say is a book in season. I've been using that phrase since they exposed this to us. And why do I say this? I believe this book is very timely in addressing some very important issues on the subject of real estate investment trusts, with particular reference to African REIT models, whilst also examining some international perspectives on the evolution and growth of REITs. As a trust practitioner and a capital market operator, I actually consider it a privilege to be standing here to give a testimonial at the occasion of the unveiling of this book, 
which I am confident will be a valuable resource in expanding the scope of the practice of REITs in Nigeria, nay, Africa. I have had the opportunity of going through the synopsis of the book, and I do have a few things to say on the book itself, the title, and also the author in that order. So the book, with every due respect, I am aware that only a few in the industry qualify to write a book in the intricate yet fast evolving area of real estate investment trusts in Nigeria. Further still, out of the few, only a handful of them will dare to do it. Not because they're not interested or that they do not want to, but because the area of this financial instrument for real estate development is often perceived as technical and fairly shrouded in some sort of mystery to many practitioners. Because real estate investment trusts are a veritable investment instrument for large scale real estate financing and also a critical driver of economic growth and development in several countries, including Nigeria. Every scholarly effort at providing deeper knowledge and educating practitioners and the investing public alike on the importance and benefits of real estate investment trust vehicles as a viable real estate investment and financing option is a welcome development and must be commended. So, Mr. Oguniron, we all commend your efforts. Now to the title. The title of the book cannot be more apt. It is appealing to the readers without them struggling to understand what the book is really about. So for me, it is just what it is, the rich book. The author, so much has been said, and I'm sure so much will still be said in the course uh, of the program today. But for me, I have known the author personally and professionally for over 30 years. First as my law lecturer at the greatest university of Lagos. <laughs> and then subsequently as a senior professional colleague, he's an erudite corporate player and an astute champion of corporate governance. But in all, one thing cuts across, he is a thoroughbred real estate practitioner. In fact, Mr. Oguniron's name is synonymous with real estate investment, and that may well be the reason why I did not expect anything less, because I was very certain that it would do ample justice to the subject. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, from the synopsis of this book, the author traversed the evolution of REIT and drilled it down to the legal framework in Nigeria the administrative aspects, including asset selection and management, the available structures and governance, the investment benefits, the issuance process, the tax treatment and application, amongst other very interesting and enlightening literature. I must say that this book is a must read for all real estate practitioners and capital market operators. Essentially, I recommend this book very highly to issuing houses and financial advisors, asset managers, corporate trustees, lawyers, capital market solicitors, rating agencies, and of course the Securities and Exchange Commission and other relevant regulatory agencies. As a matter of fact, I do recommend this book to everyone and anyone who craves a deeper knowledge and insight in this veritable investment instrument including institutional investors and individual investors. I congratulate my dear brother, who is also a very respected past president of my professional institute, the Institute of Charter Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Mr. Akim Ogunio, for writing this book at this time to fill the vacuum created by death of knowledge that pervades this area of the capital market. Thank you everyone for your kind attention. Thank you, Fumi. Thank you very much for that 
wonderful work. I, I need to quickly ask for your indulgence. There are two very important personalities I kind of did not um, acknowledge duly, and I need to do that, so please permit me. Um, a very good friend of the house, very astute um, legal practitioner of repute, um, in London Silk, um, is, a, is in here with us all the while. His name is Olalekon Yusuf. Please help me celebrate him. I think he's somewhere. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I also, I need to uh, acknowledge um, someone who is very dear to the house, Pika Lomo Atondawo, a TV journalist with Silverbird, who has been beautifully, she's somewhere there. Wow, please help me celebrate her. Thank you very much. Um, at the same time, I want to also acknowledge the pastor's boss, eh? she's somewhere here, eh? she's somewhere there. Thank you very much. <laughs> we can understand if you skip names. This nose mask thing is not helping. You, you will see your own father and you will walk past him. <laughs> so please, a million apologies on the behalf of Pastor Tumi. Can we also welcome for his words, the MD CEO, First Ally Asset Management, Lagos, Nigeria. Can we welcome Olumayowa Ogunwemimo? Olumayowa Ogunwemimo. If my instincts serve me right, that surname sounds like a name from my area. I'm from Ondo State. Why are you not from Ondo State? Should I have put Ondowemimo? Will it make it sound better? <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm funding. <laughs> Please put your hands together for Mayor. So, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I would like to stand on existing protocols, if I'm permitted. Um, so, talking about Mr. Hakim Ogunimon, as the MD of a real estate development company, Mr. Ogunimon was not only responsible for delivering on high quality real estate, but also financing them um, efficiently. Now I recall in 2020, 2010, um, the organization I worked with then had worked with him on issuing a 15 billion Naira bond. And shortly after he then launched the idea of um, establishing what is in the country today, the largest real estate investment trust, um, I'm particularly proud that I worked closely with him on that transaction. And so little wonder when in July last year, he reached out to me and said he was writing a book on real estate investment trust in Nigeria. And I felt, and I still feel now that there is no one who has the experience or the expertise to put a book together on real estate investment trust in Nigeria other than Mr. Hakim Oguniro. And so I'm glad that, and yes, he does deserve the round of applause. And um, I'm glad that he not only was very passionate about the transaction at that time, but out of his generosity and selflessness has documented that process. And, Earlier on this morning, I jokingly said to him that if we had this book back then in 2013, maybe the process of putting that read together would have been easier. But clearly, it was that process that gave birth to this book. And um, I operate in the fund management space in the Nigerian capital market. And so I will speak from that space and say, the book basically speaks to what we do in terms of um, fund management in the real estate investment space. Um, I had an overview of the 10 chapter book and my conclusion is that the book will serve as a guide for anyone who is looking at participating in real estate investment trust in Nigeria. For fund managers, which is where my forte is, that's looking to manage your rates. The book provides insights into the features and benefits, which simplifies reasons why investors will seek exposure to this unique asset class. The book also provides information on asset selection 
and management, the governance structure, as well as the listing options, which are vital in the efficient management of a rate. I would like to encourage all participants in the real estate space to grab a copy and take advantage of the insights therein in order to expand the opportunities that this unique funding structure um, provides for the real estate market in Nigeria. On that note, I would like to thank Mr. Hakim Ogunimo for putting his thoughts together in a book that will, generate, that will outlive this generation and to congratulate him on the well-written book that every single person associated with him is proud of. Once more, congratulations, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, do we have Ify now? Okay. Thank you very much, Mayowa. That was very well done. I celebrate you, Ma. MD CEO, First Ally Asset Management, Lagos, Nigeria. Let's welcome the CEO, Lexon Capital, all the way from Abuja, Nigeria, Ifi Umumakwe, Ifi Umumakwe. Good afternoon, everyone. And I stand on existing protocols. Congratulations on a fantastic book, Mr. Hakim Ogunira. Um, considering your vast experience in law, education, real estate, and finance, I certainly did not expect anything less. I knew that we we're going to have an outstanding book. Thank you and congratulations. This book has arrived at a very, very, very um, important time. With falling deposit rates, investment in real estate remains foolish. Investors are also looking for different and varied instruments for investment. The time is right for us to have more rates on the market. And I believe that this book will serve as an essential source for participants in the finance and real estate sector. Another important part um, or important aspect of this, of this book is the fact that as the um, president of the MBA said earlier, this is the book will become an essential source for lawyers and I also believe for investors, regulators, and any other person interested in the financial markets and real estate. The book tackles financial engineering that is required to structure a complex um, investment instrument like this. It also tackles the issues relating to valuation, regulation tax, and technology, elements that determine the successful listing of the rates. And then for me, I think um, the book arrives at a very, very, um, is, I, I would say the book is timely in the sense that we, after um, we will see uh, uh, more collaborations across the continent. And Ms. Ogunero tackles and deals with, the co with comparisons between the Nigerian investment landscape and that of other African countries. So um, Ms. Ogunero, congratulations. Thank you for an outstanding book. I look forward to reading it fully and also buying many copies for people who need it. Thank you very much for your contributions to the industry. Thank you. Right away, we would like to go into the book launch and um, goodwill messages by the special guest launchers. Um, seeing that everyone here is very dignified and everyone here is very important. So I would like to inform you that you are all special guest launchers. The names here are just the table toppers who will start and then the rest of us can just take our part in this beautiful, beautiful experience. Um, I would not, I would not, um, I can see that KBAC is getting ready to go. And, <laughs> and I know that it takes a lot to have him here. Um, I would like to know if 
you have something to say before you go, sir? Yes, before you go, so that we do not we do not delay you, ladies and yes, uh, Kabisio, we want you to do us a big honor before you give us your remark. The book will be unveiled, and then you can speak to it. Please, Kadio Pelorio, give us the pleasure, Kabisio. Yes, with respect. Thank you very much. So right now. It's about time. Pastor Tommy, you did not prostrate properly. Yes, sir. Chairman, sir. Chairman, sir. <laughs> also need you to be here. You're welcome, Kabiusi. 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 The chairman will do the unveiling. Thank you. We're going to pull. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. I have had the honor of previewing this book. It is a wonderful book. The only thing wrong with it is that it was not published by or that they publishers. That's the only thing wrong with it. Uh, but a beautiful book. Very well put together. Kabesi, kindly join me in unveiling. The, no, from this side. We're going to pull from this side. Is that right? Yes, yeah. We're pulling it this way. This way. Kabesi. Uh, so. <laughs> I will pull it. Okay, we pull in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes. Yes. Okay, finally. Let's put our hands together. A wonderful, wonderful effort. It is not very easy to write. Kabisi, can they? Okay, we all hold it. Uh, so, the chairman, the publisher of this book, and also the author, the wife of Mr. Ogunero, the representative of the governor of Lagos State, my former colleague, Mrs. Toke Benson Awoyin. The former deputy governor of Central Bank, my very good old Egbo, now my son. <laughs> the star to the level. He's a pastor, I understand that. Uh, please come up. Reverend Lemo. Then another very good uncle of mine, been together, been my advisor for so long. Uh, Chief I know. Please come up. Senior advocate of Nigeria, Lekon Yusu. I got a love letter from you a while back as the owner of your land. <laughs> you know, Oniru is, uh, that kingdom is the richest kingdom in Nigeria. And when it comes to real estate, it's number one. And it can be compared to the greater New York. That's in times of in terms of real estate, that's why I'm now a if, of if yeah. some of us we also yeah. have to, I, I do a lot of reading. So Richard Florida wrote a book on the, on real estate, and uh, he compared the value of real estate of Greater New York to the GDP of United Kingdom. 
You also went further to compare the real estate value of Los Angeles to the GDP of France. So when we're talking about real estate, uh, I've had the opportunity of being the commissioner of housing in Lagos State for four years. And now I've also had the opportunity of being the commissioner for agric. So in 10 years, I've been in land-based real estate before and now I ascended the throne of my father as the Oniru of Roland. So coming to Oniru and the values, the properties therein, I told Paul when I once met him, I said, Paul, this king has not come to devalue your properties. This king has not come to hijack properties. This king has come to add values to your property. Securitization, uh, security of property rights to the lawyers. I know what you know what that means. Is the major uh, ease of doing business when it comes to ease of doing business, and that's what we use to compare the ease of doing business countries and the transparency. I'm sure you all know that. So I'm very happy with the this book. REIT is very, very technical. I will not lie to you. And some of us know that what uh, Mr. Akim Oguni did in 2013, when he first launched the, the I think the third real estate, the, the, the third REIT, it was, it was a major fit. As commissioner for housing, I wanted to do securitization of the estate that we legal state had, about 4,755 years, okay? unit there in Shango Tedu and the rest of them, but it was tough, you know, we went to the capital market, but in four years, I couldn't get it through, and I'm sure Toke will do something about that. So going forward, I read this book, I read chapter one, two, six, and uh, that was why I came late. I wanted to even get to the conclusion part, but I couldn't. Uh, so Mr. Akim Ogunio, I thank you. But you can also make it simpler. This book is simpler. I will not lie to you. If you are not very versed in law or some technical uh, yeah, uh, uh, you, if you are just a developer and you went to get this book, you will need some people to interpret for you. <laughs> I, 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 I was able to, you know, because I, uh, Commissioner for housing, then I was also opportune to have attended Walton. I did international housing finance, so I, I know a lot about securitization rate and all that. But for developers that are trying to, they will have to continue to read and read and read. You understand? So you will need, so a, you will need, need you will need lawyers to break it down, Mr. Akim. They need to break it down like a manual that page one, this is step one, step two, step three before you get to the final. So on behalf of the good people of Lagos State and the lovely people of Real Kingdom, I want to launch this book uh, with a, a minimal amount. Uh, I'm still have to, I still have to adopt to being a bureaucrat, public servant to King is the transition period for me. So I'm not going to announce how much I'm going to launch this book with. Uh, the MC's phones told us that there are no whistleblowers here, but at the same time, Mr. Akim knows that uh, we will launch it with a very good uh, So I'm going to go with five copies and uh, with very good uh, sum. So distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to, to be here. Mr. Akim is, is a very good airborne now son. He was, he, as commissioner for housing, he quickly stabilized me. Uh, he, he, is, he was my advisor then. Early morning, 9 a.m., we will have a one-on-one -on -one meeting in my office before, you know. So we were doing that quarterly for four years. So, so Mr. Chairman, the celebrant, uh, Professor, not the VC, I'm talking of Professor Ogunira. She going to call Roti Ojo Nitiwa. The way he had the had the road the bow. This is not going to be the first one. 
we are still going to get some more books from Mr. Ogunio. That's it. Eshegon. Gogua Adelebare Arinokore Akoyaibio. Eshegon. MC. So. I yeah, just um, more or less um, for purpose of those who could not understand in English, uh, KBS has said that he's launching this book with about five hectares of land at Onuru. <laughs> and uh, uh, wait, so I'm, and I'm the I'm the legal advisor for oh, Mr. Gunino, uh, so I will take uh, so five ten percent of that five hectares is for me too. Thank you very much, KBS. Welcome everyone. Please let me celebrate KBC for this wonderful illustrious work is doing in the kingdom. Thank you very much for being a part of this. Okay, as some of us are going to sit, I also like to invite some of our other guests to come and join. Please, Dr. Olubemi, President CIBN, Ashwa Juto Bilawal, you know, so let's let's also join. Um, ben, no, you wait. Dr. Aibavoa, Please come and join. Dr. Solomon Haibaba, please come and join the launch. KBSC has started with um, five plot, five acres of land at Oniru. So we, so we'll move on to the. Five hectares at Onuru. Can we welcome Reverend Tunde Zemo? Can we welcome Reverend Tunde Zemo for his goodwill message and is launching with another 20 acres of land somewhere, somewhere else? <laughs> You're welcome, sir. Mr. Chairman, distinguished. to take your time. I want to congratulate my good friend uh, for launching this book. I recall last year during the lockdown when he said he's making good use of his time. And indeed, this is uh, a confirmation that he didn't waste the time. I like what he said in chapter 9, and that is what caught my attention, that this book unlocks value in access through securitization uh, and it will be a potent enabler for AFTA, and so on and so forth. With over nine trillion that we have in pension funds assets, one major way by which, of course, we can move a lot of resources into infrastructure, housing, office, and so on and so forth is through REITs. I'm glad I have uh, our bosses here in the banking industry. I'm still tangentially a public officer, uh, because I'm chairman of one of the federal government parastatas. But it's not because of that I will mention I'm uh, Being a man of God and ordained priest, I thought by coming here, I will pray for the altar and take the tithes, and take the tithe of all the offering. So I'm waving that. I'm waving that. And uh, that, that's quite uh, some amount. But talking seriously, I will also throw the line of uh, about Nehru, I will whisper to him uh, the little amount. But you know, priests don't have much money. And thank you very much. Congratulations once again, Reverend Akim. Thank you very much, sir. One more time, please put your hands together for Reverend Sunday Demo. I can guarantee you, if we have to go with tights alone, then this book is well launched already. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, can we quickly welcome um, a senior advocate of Nigeria 
for his own remarks as well as his launch. Please welcome Mr. Oladekon Yusuf, the founder of Oladekon and Co. Let's welcome the distinguished SAN. Um, we'll be calling table by table to go for breakfast lunch, one of them, but table by table as the ushers guide you while the speeches are going on. Um, Your Excellency, sir. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, may I stand on the existing protocols? Uh, for me, it's, uh, it's all from home. Uh, I knew about the commencement of the, of the beautiful uh, work of my brother, Akim Ogunira. And from then, he moved on. Uh, if I just get here and say thank you to every one of you, I think that would be enough assignment for me. Uh, talking about the book, the review has mentioned so much of what uh, the industry that has been put into it. And uh, as a practitioner, I have this uh, book as if it's uh, something I've been waiting for. I get to discuss law with uh, Mr. Green every day. It's not uh, somebody I talk to like uh, once in a month or once in a year. I think I will talk law every day. So for me, I've always encouraged him the wealth of knowledge that he kept in that uh, egg head. I've always told him that uh, if we don't, if we are not seeing the books, then where are you going to keep this? And he promised that he would do something for for us when he has the time, and the time has come. We are very proud of you, Mr. Gunira. Very, very proud of you. Um, I'm picking 10 copies. For me, either whistleblower or not blowing. I don't know about those who are blowing whistle. I'm not working for government. I'm a private practitioner. I'm an independent person, and for my brother, I'm sending you a check. It's not going to be six digits, it's going to be seven digits. <laughs> I'll deliver it to him before I leave here. And if uh, they are outstanding as to some of the costs, I think I will still be prepared to pick some of the costs also. Because for me, a little knowledge from this book will bring in a very fat uh, bank check for me. Uh, I understand it's very technical. I also understand that it's very involved. I will look for an interpreter to help me, as uh, the KBSC said, so that I can get the full benefits of the, of the book. I am very proud of you, Mr. Ogunira. Only Mr. Ogunira himself is a very good friend of mine, a brother, and uh, I look at the whole. Apart from the wife, I don't know who is closest to Mr. Ogunira much more than I do. He was my best man when I got married some few years ago. So you can see how close. And that's it. So for me as a private practitioner, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy and I welcome the book. And I thank the KVAC 
who said he struggled to, to understand the book. He got it to sister chapter. And thereafter, he, he gave up the, the struggle and tried to get here so that he could go back and then complete the reading. Uh, wonderful people I've seen today, very supportive uh, people. Mr. Ogun has always mentioned some of them to me. And now I can see Sister Laide, I can see Dr. Lemo and others, all pleasantly waiting for the day. And God has made the day for us. I thank every one of you. Mrs. Ogun, Dr. Associate Professor, uh, thank you for what you are doing to my brother that is making him look younger than his age. And uh, wonderful people in the industry, finance, capital markets, and others. This is Nigeria, and this is where we live, and we're going to have this country for life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. I know that you are a talk and do man. So if you said seven digits, I am sure it is seven digits. We celebrate you, sir. Thank you so much. Like he said, he said he doesn't know who is closer to the author. I've often wondered how Mr. Ogundiro and um, Dr. Ogundiro communicate at home. Because when people are so brilliant, even their gisting will be in legal terms. They will be gisting in Latin and in all the big, big grammar. That is why the Real Estate Investment Trust book is so deep. People like me will need it to be interpreted to me. But I know somebody that does not need any interpretation. Um, she's eating now. And um, she's the person I'm about to call. <laughs> she's the person I'm about to call. Um, uh, that's the last name on my list. That's the last name on my list before we move on. And I would like to please plead with you that if you have not launched the book, please feel free to check all our information at the back, at the back, at the center, right in the center of the book. You have all the details you need. You have Stamp Big Bank, Access Bank, um, Titan Trust Bank, Fidelity Bank, Access Bank, and Access Bank in dollar, Access Bank in pounds. Please feel free to communicate with any of our ushers on which of the banks you want to make the transfers to. Let's welcome the President, Chartered Institute of Bankers in Nigeria, Dr. Bayo Olubemi. Uh, before Dr. Bayo comes in, I just heard that um, Mr. Ogunuro said he has received the alarm from um, the alarm from from no from uh, Olalekon Yusuf SA. It was an alarm, an alarm. What he said he would do, he has done it. Please, please help me celebrate him. It was not an alert. You know, there are some alerts and there's an alarm. He has received the alarm. I told you it was a talk and do man. I anchored his daughter's wedding, and when I got when I got the alert, my my bank account vibrated. I knew something had happened. It was an earthquake. Let us welcome Dr. Bayo Ozibemi. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much, precious boss. Uh, those days, some 10, 15 years ago, she was not like Bashir's at all. But she, she was futuristic and she walked towards it. Congratulations. Um, Egbon Akim Ogunino has been a big brother and friend, and of course, a benefactor. When the REIT was to be launched and they were to appoint a registrar, UAC had a registrar uh, department. Yes, by law, they cannot be registrars to their own company, uh, to their own REIT. And the uh, first registrars where I was and I'm still the managing director was appointed the registrar. So 
uh, I'm a beneficiary of his generosity and uh, goodness. And of course, we have come a very long way. It's a reverend gentleman. Uh, as uh, Uncle Lemon was talking of tithes, I think we have many of us that we have to share in that because we have a lot of us who are pastors around. So we will share it together. Um, of course, you are elder. You will take first. I will follow you. <laughs> As the president of CIBN, we will buy some for the CIBN library. And uh, I'm not a civil servant. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not in private practice. I, I work for uh, the public, and I cannot normally, also as a pastor, I can announce uh, what I'll be giving in the public. So my own will be two-pronged approach. We'll be launching some copies. I'll be taking some 10 copies for CIBN, for our libraries, and for first registrars where I work, I'll be taking another 10 copies, and we will tell you how much we will. Uh, we'll send you our checks, Lara, uh, very soon. Thank you very much, and God bless. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, sir, Mr. Bayo Ozubemi. This is turning out to be a very interesting book launch because um, another guest that was not able to be here, the senior advocate of Nigeria, Ola Tunde Busari, sent a representative from Akinwumi and Busari Legal Practitioners, and they took 10 copies of the book for 250,000 Naira. So we say a big thank you to you, and we acknowledge your launching this wonderful book. Okay, he was around by himself, but he had to leave. We celebrate you, sir, the senior advocate of Nigeria, Olatunde Busari. Can we welcome for his own speech and to acknowledge all that has been happening today. Please celebrate with me the very, very amiable, the very distinguished, the very well-celebrated author of the Real Estate Investment Trust. Please welcome Mr. Akim Ogunero as he comes forward. Can we put our hands together? I'm still waiting for us to put our hands together for him. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for coming to support this initiative. All those who have been able to make it on site and for all those who joined us um, through the webinar, I understand that at the time we had over 200 people, but we still have like 131 people online at this time. We want to thank you very much. Um, like the chairman said, this is one of the good things that came out of the COVID lockdown, because for the first two weeks of the lockdown, I was just watching Netflix, thinking that the lockdown will be for like a few weeks or so. But when it became obvious that we were in for the long haul, I decided that I had to um, do something I'd always wanted to do, which is to write a book on real estate investment trusts. As you have heard severally today, I was a landlord teacher. And when I had the opportunity to lead a real estate investment company, um, it was easy to marry my theoretical background with um, the practice of real estate. And I understood very early in that industry that, like I always say, real estate is a financing game. Beyond the brick and mortar, beyond the designs, beyond the models that we all see, underneath all that is the need to ensure that you match your assets and liabilities sustainably. It's the only way to remain in this business. And because in this part of the world, um, long-term funding is hardly available. And by the, nature, by the very nature of real estate investment, it's a long-term business. Typical gestation period is three to five years. If you go and start borrowing 
on short-term basis, three to six months, they're just going to run into trouble. That was why we had to take a very deep look at REITs. And I'm happy that um, I've had the opportunity to put my thoughts together, to look at the law, the evolution. Uh, I need to mention that part of the challenges in this country also is because we, we created a framework for unit trusts and we've been trying to force fit REITs into it. And that's the challenge that we've had. But with the Finance Act 2019, there are two main provisions which has uh, opened, which have created the pass-through status for REITs. And I think that we're going to witness an upsurge in this um, particular asset class in the next, in the next uh, few, uh, few, uh, few months and years. It remains for me, um, I mean, in the acknowledgement of the book, I've thanked all those who have um, played one, way, one, one role or the other, you know, and I'd just like to underscore um, the chairman of today, the chairman of Eximia, uh, Professor Bamitali Omoli, um, who graciously accepted to be our chairman. He is learning very fast in the world of real estate as well. You know, um, I'd like to thank my unofficial researchers. Um, I gathered materials for this book for over an eight year period, even though I wrote the book um, within about five to six months. But I've gathered materials, I've spoken at conferences. And I think that um, that has given me a very um, unique um, um, framework to deliver what, what we have delivered. I must mention specifically, um, when I wrote the chapter on REITs and taxation, it was the most difficult chapter. I had to peer review the chapter. So I sent it to my friend, Walia Bayomi, head of tax and partner at KPMG. And he reviewed that chapter, he peer reviewed. We had our disagreements. Eventually, we came to some conclusion, which are all reflected um, in the book. So Wale, thank you very much. When I wrote the chapter on the future of risk reg um, um, regulation, looking about sustainability, risk management, and technology, I also knew that I had some limitations. So I also sent that particular chapter to Professor Kola Kinsomi um, of University of Wits in South Africa. He also peer reviewed. We disagreed eventually. Uh, we had a very, a, a very uh, good chapter. You know, so we try to put our thoughts together. But beyond this book, we're trying to establish thought leadership in this area, creating platform for engagement on all these areas that require reform. So after this engagement in Lagos, we're going to be having the Abuja engagement in about two to three weeks. Um, now looking at the necessary reform. The Finance Act has, created, has solved some of the problems, but there are still some gray areas that we need to still continue to drum in the ears of the uh, regulators. Um, I'd like to thank my wife, um, and I'd like her to stand up for recognition, especially. You know, because I wrote this book during lockdown, you know, there were only two of us in the house. And because she's also a researcher, she was busy with her project. But she was like my unofficial research assistant. You know? So whenever I needed something, I would call her. Do you think we can get this? Then we'll go online together. We'll get, I, I mean, and eventually, you know, over the period, I wanted to dodge one chapter. Then I called her one and I said, this chapter is proving so difficult, you know. Can I just put it in the footnote? And she said, no, you know, that is, that is central. And that is the chapter on taxation. You know, I'm glad that I heeded the advice because today, um, if you look at, um, I think that's chapter eight of the book, you know, it traces the history of all the challenges in Nigeria through the years, all the reform initiatives and all the things that uh, Mayowa alluded to when we floated the, the writs in 2013. I had to give a personal undertaking to the core investor, a pension fund, you know, that in case there was problem with the REIT, I mean, because they were investing like $4 billion in the REIT, you know, we had to give a personal, well, not my own undertaking, undertaking of the company, you know, at that particular time, you know. So I'd like to thank all of you, um, my family, my, my children, Tommy, who is now a lawyer, she also became part of the research team for the book and all the other ones. Thank you very much. Now, before I take my seat, I must um, express my special thanks to the team that has put this event together. 
led by Saudat. You know, I'm blessed. I have many mentees, you know. All the guys who have put this event together, they are my mentees, you know. Um, Saudat, Ife, Biola, all of them, you know, they created a unique, a unique event for me. Um, Bright, by the way, Bright came up with the design for this book at the last minute. I don't know whether Bright is there. Bright, you know, this is what it does, you know, in case you want to do any design, you can call on Bright. There's Femi, Femi runs um, HSC, you know, great people who have all, all, all supported me, you know. So I'd like to thank all of you. And I like to um, say, I, I, that's Femi, Femi da Silva, you know. If you see this uh, event trending online, you know, me, I don't know that, that, that was the, how they do it, but this morning he told me, I said, don't worry, we know what to do. You know, they took over and they've, I believe they've done a very good job. I'd like to thank all of you. You know, above God, I bless the almighty God, you know, um, for the grace to start and to finish this project. He's the giver, the sustainer, the author, and the Bible says the finisher of our faith. Um, I have my fathers and mothers in the faith in the house, um, Reverend Tundelemo, Reverend Mrs. Onuzo. Please, Mama, can you please stand up for recognition? These are our mothers in faith, you know. Their prayers keep us going. Reverend J.I.D. Dada, you know, we all belong to the same church, uh, First Part Gospel Church, Ikoi, even though they have sent me on an errand to pioneer a church in Oniko now. Thank you all, and God bless, and I wish you well. Thank you very much. Uh, please, before we go, uh, there's somebody who has been here eminently. is a part of Akim's inner caucus. Uh, Akim calls him Ohi, and that's uh, Dr. Solomon Hebewa. Please let me, stand, let me give him a round of applause. He has been here. He's part, uh, he was the one that when Akim was leaving MDS, I handed over the REM of authority too, and um, he has been part and parcel of Afghan's family. And so let's celebrate him also. Um, in, uh, as we close today, I, I want you to go home with your prayers for the, our, our main man for today. And I want you to not, not forget that he needs more of your prayer. Yes, we are giving him accolades. We have told him that he's doing well, but we all know that he cannot just rest on his words. So your prayers, your best wishes, and your commendations at all times will also speak well for him. And as I just, I want to hand over again to Bosse to round up this occasion. Once again, thank you very much for being a part of this event. My name is Tommy Vincent, and it's been my enormous, enormous joy to be part of it all. Thank you very much, Pastor Tommy Vincent. It's been a great honor working with you. Um, in no particular order, I would like to thank the following people for um, launching the book with us. Professor Bamitale Omole took two copies of the book and he has made and he will be making transfer, but he would not like it to be announced. I would like to also thank and celebrate Barrister Laide Osijo on behalf of Plum Insurance Group, who has also taking five copies of the book, but we'd like to keep our donation as private as possible. I would like to say a big thank you to Prince Yemi Adeful, who has also launched the book by a good amount of money, which he would like to keep private. Uh, we'd like to say that the account numbers for those who would not want any announcements or would like to make it very private please check the center of the magazine of the brochure and you would see all the account numbers that you can transfer in naira you can transfer to stambik bank access bank titan trust bank fidelity bank and if you want to transfer in dollar or pounds you can do to our access bank account Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say a big thank you to every one of you for being here and for taking time to be here. Um, to launch this book finally is the woman behind the book, 
So she will be launching it as well, and she will be giving the vote of thanks. And I know that her own launching is more powerful than all the launching that we have been doing. Please welcome, I call her auntie, but the rest of the world calls her Dr. Mrs. Iyabodi Ugoniro. You're welcome, ma'am. I'm here to give the vote of thanks, and I will start by thanking God because we propose in our hearts, you know, to write this book, and we planned to write the book, and we wrote the book, and we are launching the book today. The Lord God has made today a reality. We give him all glory and honor in Jesus' name. I will start by thanking the chairman of today, Prince Yemi Adefulu. Thank you, sir, for your presence here. You came in early in the morning, and it's already after two. You are still sitting down. We really appreciate your presence. We also like to thank the Oniru in absentia, the Oniru of Lagos, Oba Omogbolaon, for his royal touch to the event. We are not taking it for granted and we appreciate him in absentia. We also like to thank the, um, the webinar presenters, the discussants. I have learned a lot just sitting down and listening to them. They told us that real estate is a financing game and that due to the COVID-19 epidemic, we now have a structural shift. And that as a result of that, we have to be looking at, um, there is uh, more diversification today because Many of us, we are working from home. We must have environmental responsibility. We have to appreciate our environment more. And that whatever we are doing now should be experience-based real estate, looking at our customers. They mentioned flexibility in financing. And the one that really that I wrote down was about the, uh, was the fact of the impact of technology on real estate, that today we have access to information, like we all know, there should be speed in production, and that they encouraged that we should all leverage technology in whatever we are doing now in real estate. I also learned about the fact that we have Islamic, you know, alternative funding. And they spoke about green funding and Islamic funding. That's really, really, you know, <laughs> innovative and interesting to me. They encourage data storage of lending process and that lending options should be automated. At the end of the day, they encourage us customers that we should start to look forward to new way of building using lighter materials and that there should be a change of mindset. The regulators, the leaders, all the stakeholders, we must know that there is a shift in housing financing. So we gain all that from the presentations. We thank all of them. I don't want to mention their name because I know our time is fast spent. We thank the reviewer of the book Dr. Ogbai Omar Ebos, SAN. Thank you very much. We thank all those who gave testimony about the book. I won't want to, want to mention them, but I know that uh, Mrs. Fumi Akundayo is still around. Thank you very much. Um, we, we also want to appreciate our sponsors. They gave us the financial support in no other. Holale um, Yusuf. SAN and Co. Thank you for the financial support. And even here, you also made uh, donations. Thank you very much. Visible value chain. Thank you. We also want to thank 
um, Lagos State Building and Investment Company and the, and the director or the MD, Ashwadu Toby Lawal, thank you. Maybe he's still around. Thank you very much, we appreciate you. We will also like to thank the um, special guest launchers, Reverend Tunde Lemon, thank you very much, sir. He's still around. Mr. Lale Kong Yusuf, Tunde Busari Sehen. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your financial support. My husband has appreciated uh, Reverend Mrs. Onuso, but thank you very much, ma. She's my neighbor. She's our big mommy. And we are always enjoying our prayers and our food. Mommy can prepare all types of Igbo soup. And she's always bringing a portion. Neighbor, neighbor, I've prepared something and she will send it down. Thank you very much, ma. We appreciate our auntie, Mrs. Lady Oshijo, Mr. Bimbo, Guntunde, Dr. Solomon, Aigbuvua. Thank you very much. I would like to appreciate uh, my dean, who was here a few minutes ago, and uh, he represented the academic community. He represented my faculty. I appreciate him. I appreciate his time, because we are already writing our exams now. And for him to sit down for such a long time, I really appreciate that support. Thank you, Reverend Dada. And uh, so many other people here. I want to appreciate those who are online, the online community. Thank you. I, un I understand that uh, there are still about over 100 people online. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support, for that online support. I would like to appreciate the Generation Z for all the touch, the media touch that they have put into this program the design, the webinar, and everything. Thank you very much. I will especially appreciate um, Mrs. Saudat Salami, the CEO of Easy Shop, Easy Shop, Easy Cook, Ife Okunu, MD of Plum Insurance, that the one working at the background and the uh, the fact that this program is a success today, we really thank you for everything that you have done. And we also appreciate the staff of Eximia Reality. They also worked in the background to make today's event a success. I hope I've not left anyone. Professor Bamitali, thank you. We appreciate the MC. Thank you very much. And on that note, uh, the representative of uh, the governor, Mrs. Token, thank you. And I will go back to God again as we are closing, as we draw the curtain to this program. We want to appreciate God for today, the way everything has gone, for the planning, for the fact that he's here with us, for the success, for the end of today's program, for the continuation we just give all glory and honor to him. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. When I was mentioning my fathers in the Lord, I skipped my mind to mention one of my real fathers who has been here, Reverend Dele Abegunde, who is the district overseer, Magodo District First Square. And it will do us the honor of coming to say the closing prayer you know, for this event. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Shall we rise up to pray? Our Father and our God, we thank you for all you have done today. We are grateful to you for using Akim to bless our generation. We are asking that you continue to take all the glory in Jesus' name. We pray that this book will bless our world. And we also be a precursor to several other ones that we use to bless our generation in Jesus' name. For everyone you have used to have blessed him, we pray that you bless them in return in Jesus' name. We pray particularly for Iyabo, the Lord, you continue to enlarge our coast as he supports our brother in Jesus' name. 
And as we go further, we are grateful because we are sure you are going home with us and to our offices in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Can we have all the mentees? Can we have all... Um, now, the program is over. I can call him what we normally call him. Can we have all have Uncle Kim's team members? Uh, I am done with the author and Mr. Oguniro and Mr. Akim Oguniro. Can we have Uncle Kim's mentees? Everybody come up. Can we have everybody come up? I'd like to celebrate specially Auntie Yabo because anybody that Uncle Akim just brings and says, this is my aburo, she will embrace us. She does not even care who we are, where we have been. She will just embrace us. Thank you so much, ma'am for allowing him to be all he has been to all of us. Uncle Akim is the one person that has a sense of humor, but when he calls me, I'm afraid to pick my phone because he's always asking, what are you up to now? Are you, are you going back to school? Are you doing, what project are you working on? So I have to crack my brain. When I see his call, I will say, eh, hey, boss, eh, checklist. What have you not done right? We we'll celebrate you, sir. Chief Alalek on you, Super CN. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much. Okay. All the mentees, the gang members, the gang members. Without that, do not go anywhere. <laughs> I saw her because she's always fixing one thing or the other. I saw her turn around. I said, eh, eh. she's not going anywhere. Can, can you guys go? All the mentees, all the mentees. All the members of the family. All the inner carcass. The people that knew about the book before the book came out. If you are Uncle Kim's mentee and you are not a member of the planning committee, it's not a problem. You can come too. It's okay. Emma Tola India, photo tell me you see no error come a What a yai is not possible. Mok of a show of a guru that everybody standing properly. Okay. Now, any photo you took before now is null and void. Sorry, sir. You are wearing blue. You are not wearing black and white. You didn't get the memo, sir. Can you see her at the back? Can you see her? Congratulations, everyone. Excellent program, excellent event. Congratulations to Uncle Kim and Auntie Yabo. Well done. Great job. God bless you. Have a fantastic trip back home. God bless you all. This live stream was brought to you by Virtual Events Limited, Africa's leading virtual event streaming company. For bookings, call plus to 34909. 807-9830 Email Hello at virtualevents.ng Visit our website at www.virtualevents.ng